Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Iona College Women's Basketball here from the Heinz Athletic Center. John Senko with you here on IonaInsider.com. The Iona College Gales getting set to getting set to take on the Canisius College Golden Griffs here in MacPlay. The Gales coming in with a record of 23 and 3, 16 and 1 in conference. Number one in the Mac Canisius comes in 11 and 15. With a 7-10 and 10 conference record, they currently sit 7th in the Metro Atlantic Athletic standings. Taking a look at the last game for Iona, they are coming off a fairly dominant 78-62 win over Niagara. And it was Aaliyah Robinson who was leading the charge from behind the three-point line. She went 6 of 9 from deep, as you see here. That's Robinson from the corner. She was knocking him down, especially in the first half where she had 17 points off the bench. She was not as needed in the second half as D'Amico Martinez was able to pick up her game. Only three points in the second half for Robinson, but once again, it was a trifecta. She finished with a career-high 20 points, 6 of 9 shooting, and the Gales set a new program record here at Iona. 16 three-point field goals. As I mentioned, Robinson hit six of them. D'Amico Martinez finished with 23 points. She only shot 9 of 24 from the floor, and she took 15 three-point field goals. She made five of them. However, Martinez, a little bit of a silver lining there to a fairly uh, uneven game for her was that she did not commit a single turnover in the game. That was the first time since December 31st against St. Peter's such was the case. But also looking at that game for Iona against Niagara, an unsung hero who was kind of sneaky in the scorebook was Alicia Powell. She finished with 12 points, 10 rebounds, and 7 assists. That is 3, excuse me, that's actually 10 assists, 7 rebounds. I misspoke. So she came 3 rebounds shy of a triple-double. And that was a big bounce-back performance for her after being held scoreless against Ryder in 35 minutes against the Bronx. I, overall, Iona played fantastic defensively. They held Niagara. They could not get in a flow throughout the game. A lot of turnovers for the Purple Eagles. And however, the Gales offensively were not that strong. They only shot 36% from the floor. That's below their season average. And, that, and they shot 37% from deep, which is about where they shoot for the entirety of this season. However, if you look at this Canisius team, they're coming in on a two-game winning streak. Their latest win coming on the road against the St. Peter's Peacocks. It was Kayla Huhuli who led the charge early on for Canisius, scoring 11 of the team's first 16 points. She finished with a team-high 16 on 7 of 9 shooting. Jamie Ruddle down low at 10 points for the Golden Griffs in 24 minutes. Deanna Mills had four points, but also registered a team-high eight rebounds, which was one shy of her career high. And the Golden Griffs held St. Peter's to only one field goal in the final nine minutes, and the Peacocks were held without a single point from the floor in the final seven. So the Canisius Golden Griffs defense really did the job in New Jersey, holding down the fort against the St. Peter's Peacocks. Now the Canisius team is going to try to pull off something they haven't done since 2009. That is beat a team that is atop the max standings. The, the Golden Griffs beat Maris in 2009. And also, Canisius has not beaten the Gales in the Heinz Athletic Center since that very same year. Tip-off is 15 minutes away here between Iona and Canisius. I sat down with sophomore guard Aaliyah Robinson and head coach Billy Gotti to do a pre-game interview. They'll talk about yesterday's, or two days ago, the game against Niagara and now today's contest against Canisius and what it means moving forward in the MAC as the tournament is just weeks away. Stay tuned for more action here on icygales.com. Division I basketball returns to Springfield this March. The Mac Men's and Women's Basketball Championships, where somebody could become an NCAA champion. March 6th through the 10th, Mass Mutual Center in Springfield. Gets it off from Mac. Get your tickets for the Mac Basketball Championship and get into the action. All the way to the finish. Ticketmaster.com, MacAchusetts.com, or at the Mass Mutual Center box office. Presented by Mass Mutual Financial Group. John Sika here with sophomore guard Aaliyah Robinson on the Ion Insider pregame show. Aaliyah, you guys coming off a 78-62 win over Niagara, and you guys controlled the game for basically from the start of the tip to the end of the game. Did it feel good to control a game from beginning to end? Yes, this was an amazing win, and now we're going to Canisius today, and we're going to go out there with confidence that we did last night and win this game. Defensively, the Gales really held Niagara in check. They couldn't get a flow offensively at all. Was that one of your best defensive games of the year? Yes, this was definitely one of our best defensive games. We definitely proved it out there. We all played and stepped up one-on-one um, -on -one defense. How did you guys step up on one-on-one -on -one defense? What did you do specifically this game that maybe you locked in other games? Um, we definitely helped one another out when we were in gap defense and helping each other out when somebody drove by them. <laughs> Offensively, the team hit 16 three-point field goals, a single game record here at Iona. You hit six of those yourself. How does it feel to hold that record? I know you contributed a lot to it. 
Um, it feels great to know that I actually had confidence this game to knock down my shot. And now when you get up, when you come up off the bench, it seems like you want to get a shot up pretty quickly to get yourself in the flow of the game. Is that the case? Um, it depends. Like, if I'm open, then I'll take the open shot. That's basically how I go in the game, to take the open shot. You really had to step up in the first half because Demika Martinez struggled a little bit shooting. You shot, you scored 17 points in the first half. Talk about when you got up off the bench and went into the game. Did you see yourself having to step up with Mika struggling? Um, no, I was just playing like how I usually play. I just go out there and play the hardest that I can, and that's what I did. And I was able to knock down shots, at which we needed. Alicia Powell had kind of a sneaky, fantastic game. She had 12 points, 10 assists, and 7 rebounds. Came 3 rebounds shy of a triple-double. Uh, just talk about how well she's playing now and what she means for this team when she's playing this well. Yeah, she's she played really well last night, the other night. And she was giving me the ball, which added to her assists. And she when she does that, we are a very, well team, very good team. Because knowing that we have a good starting five, which all of us can actually help each other out by doing that and get these wins. Hey, Coach Billy Gotts said in a previous interview, you relish coming off the bench, being the first one off the bench, and being a spark look for this team. Why is that? Um, I just give my team energy. I just want to go out there and help them as much as I can. Also, going 6-9 from beyond the arc yesterday, you're officially shooting over 40% on the year from three. Uh, you're joining Alicia Powell, Demika Martinez, hitting about 40% from beyond the arc. If you guys were to have a three-point shooting contest, who would win? Uh, that would be a hard one. Um, it'd be pretty close between all three of us, actually, just depending on who's hot that day. Now, today's game is against the Canisius Golden Griffs. It was a tight contest up there in Buffalo. What are you expecting today? Um, we're definitely going to go out there with confidence that we did the other night against Niagara and just keep playing the way we're playing, play great defense, which we did, and just stop them from getting their threes off in transition. Last time out against the Golden Griffs, you only played three minutes, but however, you're playing much better basketball now, and you're obviously going to get more minutes. What can you bring to this team this time around against Canisius that Canisius didn't see last time? Definitely my threes, my offensive threat, and my defense. I just got to go out there with energy and stop whatever I have to do out there to go. You mentioned stopping their transition threes. How does the team go about doing that? Um, you just got to run back on defense, and that's... It. Just that simple? Um, yeah, and just talk. All right, well, you also forced 13 Canisius turnovers last time you played and scored 21 points off those turnovers. How can you make sure you guys can get some fast break points today? Definitely when we press, we'll definitely get some steals, and being in our gap defense will definitely help us get some steals. All right, Leah, good luck today. Thank you. The House of Sports is Westchester's premier youth sports training facility, specializing in skill-based teaching and coaching. The House of Sports focuses on basketball, lacrosse, baseball, and performance training. Their 120,000 square foot facility is located in Ardsley, New York, which is just minutes away from Manhattan, northern New Jersey, and Connecticut. Be sure to visit their website at www.houseofsportsny.com or give them a call today at 914-479-5419. Check out J.P.'s Waterside Restaurant at 703 Mitterford Avenue on City Island, serving fresh seafood, sumptuous sizzling steaks, and delicious Italian specialties. J.P.'s is open every day year-round. Come in for lunch at J.P.'s Waterside every day starting at 11. Don't forget about us for catering all your special occasions either. Walk-ins and reservations are accepted. That's J.P.'s Waterside Restaurant at 703 Mitterford Avenue right there on City Island. Give us a call at 718-885-3364. That's it's J.P.'s Waterside Restaurant on City Island. Welcome back here to the Island Insider pregame show. John Sigge here with head coach Billy Gatti. Coach, you guys come off a 78-62 to win over Niagara. You controlled from the tip-off all the way to the final buzzer. Uh, what were some thoughts on that win? Uh, I think that you know we did a good job moving the ball against their zone and, and finding open shots. Uh, and I think, obviously, Aaliyah Robinson stepped up huge for us that game and knocked down some big shots where we were a little bit stagnant at times. Um, much different Niagara team, I think, than we saw up there. Uh, they couldn't get into a rhythm themselves, so you know I wouldn't give us all of the credit. But uh, you know I was excited to see us knock down quite a few threes and, and just to kind of move the ball to each other. Yeah, defensively you held Niagara to 62 points. It was a 94-84 game up there in Buffalo. Was this one of your better defensive efforts of the year? I, I would say we're improving um, defensively. I wouldn't say necessarily one of the better. Um, I th like I said, I don't think Niagara was able to get themselves in a rhythm either. Um, so we were able to take away some stuff, but they you know found 
found some turnovers themselves that we didn't you know necessarily force, um, but we were able to capitalize on the, on them on the offensive end. So um, I obviously would like to continue to see us improve on the defensive end, but I think we're moving in the right direction. Did it feel good to control a game from the tip off all the way to the final buzzer? Yes, it felt good to you know finally get into that space where we were able to control it and able to kind of you know get some other people some looks and try to figure out uh, different options for us. So it felt it was a nice uh, feeling of that game. You mentioned the three point shot. The team hit a record sixteen three point field goals. Did you feel that most of those field goals came within the run of the offense? Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't think uh, there were any forced uh, three-point shots. I think that we did a good job of moving the ball, coming off the screen, finding the open person, making the extra pass. Uh, it took us 43 to get there, but <laughs> uh, glad we were able to knock him down. Yeah, well, you mentioned Aaliyah Robinson, 20 points off the bench, 17 in the first half when D'Amico was struggling. How big was she in this game? Aaliyah was huge. Aaliyah was huge. She came in with a lot of confidence, got back into her rhythm. She's kind of been out of sorts a couple of games for us um, since she had the start of couple of games ago but it was nice to see her get into a groove early and knock down some shots early because I think that gave her a lot of confidence and I think that helped give everybody on our team confidence when D'Amica wasn't hitting right away. Yeah D'Amica struggled in the first step. Did you feel she was forcing some shots up early in the game? No I don't think she was forcing I just think you know it's that time of the year where everybody's a little fatigued everybody's a little tired and I think it caught up to her uh, after her last performance um, so I didn't think she was able to get warm right away um, but I think second half she came back big for us. You talk about a player who really stepped up as well kind of sneaky though it was Alicia Powell 12 points 10 assists 7 rebounds 3 short of a triple double what about her game very sneaky <laughs> um, it was really nice to see her because she was able to uh, beat them off the dribble quite a bit and get into the lane and create and find other people so it was nice to see her be able to get 10 assists on that game um, because she hasn't been in a rhythm offensively for the past couple of games um, getting in getting extra shots up trying to find her offensive scoring threat back um, but to have her find everybody else I think is important for us someone who struggled against Niagara was Joy Adams. Six points, uh, only 12 rebounds, I believe. Her double-double streak ended. She got an early foul trouble with two personal fouls, and that seems to be a trend that's been going on the past couple of games. How do you talk to a player like Adams, who is so aggressive on the ball, always going after it, but also who teach her you can't get, to, can't get into early foul trouble? I think it's just a learning process for her. Obviously, she's young. She's a sophomore. We expect a lot out of her, mm -hmm. um, but she's going to have those games where she picks up a few cheap fouls. Um, so just constantly communicating with her that you, know, you just have to make sure you're in a stance and you're ready to go right away. Um, she sometimes gets herself caught where she's watching a little bit and then she's reactive rather than getting to the spot early. So um, I think it's, she'll just continue to grow as great games go along and, and hopefully this is a game where she can stay out of foul trouble and get back into the rhythm of her double-double habits. With a big win against Ryder and then a fairly easy win against Niagara, do you feel this team starting to get swagger back? I think so. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> uh, but we'll see today, I guess. And now today's game is against the Canisius Golden Griffs. It was a tight game up there in Buffalo, especially the first half you guys pulled away. What are you expecting here today? They absolutely uh, set the tempo, set the momentum for the first half up there. So I expect mm -hmm. them to come out hungry, ha playing hard, uh, fighting, because, you know, we really turned it around in the second half and kind of took the game back from them. So I'm sure that's the message that they're getting, that they had an opportunity to, to get a win up there and they and set the pace. So they're going to have to stay a little bit more consistent with that. So uh, should be a good game. I think they'll, you know, try to slow us down a little bit, um, but we'll continue to try to run and play within our game. Uh, but, you know, it's always a, a great game, a great matchup in uh, conference time. So. Aliyah Robson only played three minutes in the first match. Do you expect her to play more today? Yes, I think Aliyah has improved quite a bit mm -hmm. uh, from that point in the year early where we were still kind of struggling to find who their sixth person was. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think she's really found her spot, found her role to be the first off the bench for us. So I think she'll, I mean, she'll obviously get quite a few more minutes for us this game. Yeah, she mentioned in her pregame interview the team has to stop Kanisha's transition threes. How does the team go about doing that today? We need to communicate. As soon as they get the defensive rebound and they turn to run and push towards us, we have to stop the ball and we have to communicate and we have to make sure we get matched up early. Um, they have some great shooters uh, in Hahuli and Morbido and they shoot deep um, beyond the three-point line so we have to make sure that we're talking the entire time and we sprint back and we take pride in defending the three-point line. Morbido has started every game since that Iona matchup on January 3rd. What does she bring to the starting lineup? She brings great shooting and she really stretches the floor for them. Um, with a different lineup we were able to shrink a little bit and kind of help and, and take away some of their drives but also really locate their one the one shooter they had on the floor a ton but with both of them, Hahuli and Morbido in there, they really stretch us and really make us have to make sure that we uh, really lock down one-on-one -on -one defensively so that we don't have to overhelp on Mills and then leave wide-open shooters. Yeah, you have Morbido and, and Hahuli on the outside. We also have Jamie Ruddle on the inside, a very capable forward who can score. What's the key to stopping her? Uh, we're going to have to front her, and we're going to have to trap her. Um, we obviously have struggled a little bit defensively this year with trying to defend the paint and trying to make sure we shut
shut down post players. So we're going to have to send a couple people to her, and we're going to have to make sure that we keep her off the boards and we just match her physicality. She's a really good player, and when she gets into a rhythm, she can really score for them. So we have to make sure we uh, make her priority as well. All right, Coach, good luck today. Thank you. Let's all go to the Beachmont. Come in and see what we're all about. For years, the Beachmont has been all about you. Great dining, great atmosphere, and has been a meeting place where the entire Iona community gathers. The Beachmont Tavern at 750 North Avenue in New Rochelle, right across the street from Iona, has always been the first choice for Gale fans before and after each game. We are open seven days a week for lunch or dinner and is a fun place to be any hour of the day. Mondays are half price wing nights at the Beachmont, Enjoy the best buffalo wings in town, along with half off of domestic pitchers. Tuesday is a two-for-one night with domestic bottles and appetizers. Wednesday, enjoy our great burgers, half-priced as well, along with $3 domestic bottles. Friday is happy hour, so come in and enjoy some complimentary wings. If you're planning a get-together at the Beachmont, they have a private room available for your party. Or if you're having it at home, let the Beachmont cater it. The Beachmont is more than just a restaurant. It's a meeting place for sports fans. Watch the big game on one of our large TVs. The Beachmont has the NFL's Sunday ticket. Bring in a ticket stub from any Iona game and receive a free half dozen Beachmont wings. That's the Beachmont Tavern, 750 North Avenue in New Rochelle. We look forward to seeing you there. Back here on IonaInsider.com, John Stanko joining you here courtside as the Iona College Gales getting set to take on the Canisius College Golden Griffs in Mac play. Let's take a look at the player matchup today to watch you got to look at, if you're Canisius, you got to look at Meg, uh, Kayla Huahuli, a junior guard from St. Mary's, Pennsylvania. She is a threat from the outside that the Gales have to stop. She averages roughly 10 points per game, shoots 36% from, from the floor, and roughly 31% from the three-point line. For Iona, it's Alicia Powell. She's coming off a game where one of the best of her year, yet, however, nobody seems to know it. 12 points, 10 assists, 7 rebounds in the win against Niagara. She's averaging roughly 12 points a game, nearly 4 assists per game, and is hitting nearly 45% from beyond the arc. So the Gales will look to ride Powell today. She had 27 points last time Kanishas came to the Hind Center. And she also played incredibly well up there in Buffalo. She carried her team to the victory on that road trip up north. So the Gales will have to match up against Hua Huli today and Powell will be doing that. So that's a player matchup to watch today. And if you're Kanishas and if you're the Golden Griffs, you want to keep this game close for as long as possible. Because as I mentioned, the Griffs have not won at the Heinz Center since 2009. And also, Kinesis has had exceptional luck when games are close. They are 4-0 and when games is decided by 5 points or less. And also, they are 7-2 and when they hold opponents under 60 points. And, go and Kinesis is 9-1 and when they score over 60. Now, however, scoring has been their problem because they cannot get into the flow offensively quite a bit. It says in the Iona scouting report that this team is very capable of being a great team when they play together. However, they cannot do it on a consistent basis. Now, they run a, they run a motion offense with a lot of screening, so the key is for Iona to communicate quite a bit on the defensive end, call out all those screens, be able to switch and get into the gaps quickly. Also, transition defense is a key that Coach Gotze and Aliyah Robinson mentioned in the pregame interview that they're going to need to perform today because if they don't do that, then Canisius will score quite a bit. The key to the game for Iona, as I mentioned, transition defense energy. Bring it for 40 minutes. That's what it says in the scouting report. Bring it for 40 minutes. They did that for the most part against Niagara. In my mind, one of their best games of the year, especially defensively. And now, the final key to the game, run and execute. The Gales need to run and transition correctly and make good passes, maybe not those long baseball passes that Joy and D'Amica would like to take. I, Coach Gotzi wants the guards to stretch the floor today, go to the wings in the corners because, according to the scouting report, Canisius cannot get out well and transition and guard those wings without leaving open lanes. And we know Alicia Powell, if she's on the fast break, can dish it out to the wing to like a D'Amica or an Aaliyah, or she can take it straight to the bucket. So that's what the Gales will be looking for today here, matching up against the Canisius Golden Griffs in MAC play. We'll take a short break here on IonaInsider.com, then come back with the starting lineups tip-off just moments away here from the Heinz Athletic Center. Let's all go to the Beachmont. Come in and see what we're all about. For years, the Beachmont has been all about you. Great dining, great atmosphere, and has been a meeting place where the entire Iona community gathers. The Beachmont Tavern at 750 North Avenue in New Rochelle, right across the street from Iona, has always been the first choice for Gale fans before and after each game. We are open seven days a week for lunch or dinner and is a fun place to be any hour of the day. Mondays are half-price wing nights at the Beachmont, 
Enjoy the best buffalo wings in town along with half off of domestic pitchers. Tuesday is a two for one night with domestic bottles and appetizers. Wednesday enjoy our great burgers half priced as well along with three dollar domestic bottles. Friday is happy hour so come in and enjoy some complimentary wings. If you're planning a get together at the Beachmont they have a private room available for your party or if you're having it at home let the Beachmont cater it. The Beachmont is more than just a restaurant it's a meeting place for sports fans. Watch the big game on one of our large TVs. The Beachmont has the NFL's Sunday ticket. Bring in a ticket stub from any Iona game and receive a free half dozen Beachmont wings. That's the Beachmont Tavern, 750 North Avenue in New Rochelle. We look forward to seeing you there. The House of Sports is Westchester's premier youth sports training facility, specializing in skill-based teaching and coaching. The House of Sports focuses on basketball, lacrosse, baseball, and performance training. Their 120,000 square foot facility is located in Ardsley, New York, which is just minutes away from Manhattan, northern New Jersey, and Connecticut. Be sure to visit their website at www.houseofsportsny.com or give them a call today at 914-479-5419. Back here on IonaInsider.com. The clock is set for 20 minutes, and tip-off is just moments away. But let's take a look at the starting lamps first for the visiting Canisius College Golding Griffs. It starts in the backcourt. Number standing at five foot nine, number three, a senior from Binghamton, New York, Jen Morabito. She has started every game since the Golden Griffs lost to Iona. She's averaging roughly seven points per game in conference. Alongside her, our player matchup, Kayla Huahuli from St. Mary's, Pennsylvania. She stands at five foot seven. Where's number four? She's made a three-point field goal in 24 of 26 games this season. However, a matchup where she was shut out from beyond the arc was on January 3rd against Iona. And then also in the backcourt, number five, standing at five foot five from Binghamton, New York, sophomore Tiana Mills. She had a career high three three point field goals last time the Golden Griffs played Iona. And then down though, it's a pair of Canadians. First, number 25, standing at six foot three, senior Jamie Ruddle. She has scored double digit points in four of the past five games. And she currently ranks 16th in Canisius women's basketball history in scoring. And then down though, finally standing at the five spot, number 33, six foot one, red shirt junior, Courtney Vonda Bauvenkamp. She began starting once again following the game against Ryder for Canisius, and she's been playing exceptionally well ever since, averaging six and a half points per game and nearly six rebounds per game. Now let's bring you the stars for your Iona College Gales. It starts with the red shirt senior captain, number five from Long Valley, New Jersey, Haley D'Angelo. However, the captain's been struggling a bit of late. Over the past four games, D'Angelo has only had eight assists and ten turnovers. However, her partner in the backcourt, number 11 from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Alicia Powell, she is coming off a phenomenal game, and she's been playing great over the past couple weeks. As I mentioned, 12 points, 10 assists, and seven rebounds against Niagara. She will look to continue that hot streak today. And then the possible Mac Player of the Year, number 14, standing at five foot seven, the junior from Meriden, Connecticut, Damika Martinez. She has set the women's basketball scoring record this year for points in the season with 633 thus far. And then down low, number 24, sophomore from Orlando, Florida, Joy Adams. She had her 17-game double-double streak come to a halt against Niagara. She only finished with six points and 12 boards. And then down low, number three, standing on six foot three, senior Sabrina Girardot from Queens, New York. She played 35 minutes last time against Canisius. However, in the game since, she's only averaging 18 minutes per game. That's why we should expect a lot more of a Leah Robinson from head coach Billy Gotzi today. It's important to note that Iona did play Canisius in the MAC tournament last year, and D'Amica Martinez netted 36 points, which tied a MAC tournament record for points in a game. The Gales obviously won that one, 76 to 58. 
Also, Joy Adams needs eight rebounds to become sixth all-time in Iona history. She would pass Christina Ford. And with a win today, the Iona College Gales would tie a single-season record with 24 wins. However, this Canisius team is looking to end a five-game losing streak to the Gales. And this is Canisius, This is the Golden Griffs final road game of the year. Canisius is in their home dark blue with gold stripes down the side, gold lettering, and gold numbers. Iona is in their traditional home watch with maroon lettering and stripes down the side. It's going to be Deandre, It's going to be Jared, or excuse me, versus Ruddle for the tip. As the Gales and the Golden Griffs getting set to play here in MAC conference play, the referees signal to both sides. They are ready. The ball's up in the air. Ruddle and Jaredar battle. Jaredar wins it. D'Angelo pulls it down, and we are underway. D'Angelo goes left side. Martinez calling around the screen. Will not take the three-point shot. Instead, she'll dribble up, take the free-throw line jumper, and she'll knock it down. And not even 10 seconds in, the Gales hold a 2-0 lead. Dimitri Martinez looks to get off to a hot start after struggling in the early onset against Niagara. That bucket there is a good start for the junior. As Mills now driving Blaise and right side, Powell cuts her off. Mills picks up her dribble, kicks out Devon to Bauvenkamp. Bauvenkamp feeds down low to Ruddle. Spin move on Jared or her hook shot falls and we're not at a two. Powell on the left wing. She's being guarded by Morbido. Powell now dribbles top of the key, feeds it to D'Angelo for a three. It does not fall and the rebound goes to Ruddle. She boxed out Jared or well there. Now Mills We'll bring it across the timeline for Canisius. Canisius currently sitting seventh in the MAC standings. However, they could move up with a couple wins as the middle of the conference is jam-packed. As Ruddle will take the uncontested three, it doesn't fall and Adams gets the board. She'll dribble it up the left sideline. Gives it now to Powell. Powell will now slow it down as Mills matched up on her. Jaredor sets the screen. Powell splits a double team. Drives Dish to Adams. She dishes out to D'Angelo. Now back to Powell, and they're going to call a three-second violation, violation on Sabrina Jaredor. That's the first turnover for Iona. The score is not at a two. 18.40 still to go here in the first. Still very early on. The Gales coming off one of the more dominant wins of the season. In my mind, the most dominant win since the Gales won at Sacred Heart. Now right off top of the key, feeds it to Vandu Balvenkamp. Now this is Morbido from long range. It is good. The duo of Huahuli and Morbido is going to cause problem for the Gales today on the perimeter. And Morbido makes her first three-point field goal, and she gives Kinesis a 5-2 lead. Now D'Angelo not taking three, dishes the baseline to Adams. She will look to get it into Jared or whoever decides to dribble it back out. Crossing over Morbido, goes baseline. Cross-court pass to Martinez, keeps it inbounds as the pass was a little bit off. Now with five seconds on the shot clock, Martinez is going to have to put one up. She does in front of Mills, shot barely grazes off the rim. Morbido pulls down the board. Morbido gets it to Ruddle. Ruddle has that three if she wants it. Jared is not closing out her as Hulo Hu Huli feeds it to Mills. Now great lob pass down though, however, Von de Bauvenkamp could not complete it as now Adams gets the feed from Powell looking to drive right side. She finishes past Ruddle and the Gales now trail by one, 5-4. Ruddle from the top of the key, she'll take another three-point field goal. However, that one only hits the backboard and Powell gets the rebound. Powell eyes forward. Gives it to D'Angelo, left corner. D'Angelo looking to drive in, however, cut off by Morbido. Now D'Angelo will drive to the free throw line, dishes out to Martinez. D'Angelo setting a screen. J Martinez doesn't use it, said feed it to Jaredor. Jaredor going from block to block, puts up a shot contested. Great defense there by Van de Bauvenkamp. However, D'Angelo got the offensive board. She feeds it to Powell. Powell drives center of the paint, off the backboard, doesn't go. Offensive rebound, Jaredor. She goes up strong. She is fouled, and the bucket is good. Sabrina Jaredor with a chance for a three point play. As you see there, great offensive rebound by Jaredor. She goes up strong, and it looked like she was swiped, and they're going to call a foul on Tiana Mills. That's the first foul of the game for either squad. 
As Aaliyah Robinson checks in, replacing Haley D'Angelo, as Coach Gatti has a quick conversation with. Now Tiana Mills feeds it to Morabito. Morabito feeds it to Balvin Kemp. Now Ruddle has the left wing back to Huahuli, top of the key. Robinson, early check in here. She's guarding Huahuli. Now match up on Morabito as Mills drives left side. Crossover on Martinez. Cross court pass to Huahuli. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Huahuli drives baseline, falls down. That pass is tipped out of bounds by Joy Adams. It'll be Canisius ball on the baseline. Only five seconds left on the shot clock. Checking in for Coach Terry Zay, number 24, Crystal Porter, a sophomore from Houston, Texas. She replaces Courtney Von Dubovenkamp. As down low, she gets the inbound. She puts it up strong, and she is fouled right away. Demika Martinez sends Kanisha to the free throw line when the shot clock was winding down. Two shots for Crystal Porter, and she knocks down the first. Porter is shooting 58% from the free throw line on the season. Jamie Ruddle takes a seat as Bo Van Kemp re-enters the game. Porter knocks down the second, and Kniecius retakes the lead 7-6. Powell loses control of the pass, however, still gets to Adams. Kick out to Robinson, driving toward the elbow. Back out to Powell, the long three-point field goal. It rattles home. Alicia Powell gives the Gales a 9-7 lead. Huahuli driving baseline, gets by Jaredor, and she puts up the layup, and we're knotted at 9. Already three ties and four lead changes here, and we're just under four minutes in. Now this is the, in the near side corner. Robinson's three-point field goal is good. Morabito didn't close out quick enough, and Robinson made her pay. 12-9 the Gales lead. Robinson's now made seven of her last nine, seven of her last ten three-point field goals as Girardor gets a steal. However, she falls to the ground trying to look for an outlet pass. And that's going to be a turnover. It'll go back to Canisius. And that'll bring us to our first official media timeout with 15.31 to go in the first half. The Gales hold the early edge 12-9. Division One basketball returns to Springfield this March. The Mac Men's and Women's Basketball Championships, where somebody could become an NCAA champion. March 6th through the 10th, Mass Mutual Center in Springfield. Gets it off from Get your tickets for the Mac Basketball Championship and get into the action. All the way to the finish at Ticketmaster.com, MacAchusetts.com, or at the Mass Mutual Center box office. Presented by Mass Mutual Financial Group. The House of Sports is Westchester's premier youth sports training facility, specializing in skill-based teaching and coaching. The House of Sports focuses on basketball, lacrosse, baseball, and performance training. Their 120,000 square foot facility is located in Ardsley, New York, which is just minutes away from Manhattan, northern New Jersey, and Connecticut. Be sure to visit their website at www.houseofsportsny.com or give them a call today at 914-479-5419. John Stenka with you here on IonaInsider.com. The Gales hold a 12-9 lead over Canisius. And the Gales had 16 three-point field goals last time out in their contest against Niagara. They're continuing the hot streak from beyond the arc. You see Alicia Powell knocking down that three-point field goal. Then a great look from Powell feeding Robinson. And Robinson knocked down the trifecta, giving the Gales a 12-9 lead. Spread out scoring thus far for the Gales. The only player not to score is Haley D'Angelo. As she still takes a seat on the bench. As Porter looked to feed it. That was, she looked to feed it to Lauren DeHaunt. But however, DeHaunt was not looking for the pass when sailing out of bounds into the seats. And it'll be Iona Ball. Now Powell handling the point position at the top of the key. Feeds it to Martinez left side. Who will match match on her, forcing her to the left. She'll go left, pull up jumper. She knocks it down. D'Amica gives Iona a 14-9 lead. Now Martinez with four points on two of three shooting. Bovin Camp, she'll take the long two-point field goal. She'll knock that one down. So the quick answer from Canisius. Now Powell, long pass to Robinson. Robinson cross-court pass to Martinez. Martinez will take the three-point field goal. That one's off front rim, no good. Huo Huli with the board. 
Uli picks up her dribble. Feeds the De haunt jumper, rims in and out. Jaredor pulls down the board. She feeds it to Powell. Jaredor already a presence here early on, more so offensively and rebounding wise than she has been in the past weeks. Hopefully that'll continue for Iona. As Jaredor has two points and two rebounds. Powell feeds it to Martinez, jabs it on Hua Huli. Hua Huli trying to make her go left, except Martinez finds the open. Robinson, she'll take the three. Alia Robinson, two for two from deep. Make it six points for the sophomore spark plug and give the Gales a 17 to 11 lead. 14 minutes to go. DeHaan, top of the key, Bovenkamp, Bovenkamp. Pump fakes on Jared, are now feeds it to Porter. Porter, back to Mills. Mills will take the contested three. Powell's in her face, however, she misses it off the back of the rim and Joy Adams pulls down the board, looking to go coast to coast. Kick out to Powell, Powell extra pass to Robinson. Robinson decides not to take the three and Powell will reset the offense, dribbling toward the top of the key, driving right side. Stops, stops on a dime, feeds to Robinson. Robinson on the baseline, back to Powell. Powell, the long three-point field goal, well short off front of the rim. However, offensive rebound goes to Adams. She drives left side. That pass seemed to be tipped out of bounds. Out of bounds They're going to say Joy Adams lost control of it, so it's going to stay with the Griffs. Joy Adams moving a little bit too fast for her own good there. Showed great hustle, though, getting that rebound. Also of note, only zero personal fouls thus far on Joy Adams. Only two called the entire game as Mills drives. That pass is tipped out of bounds by Robinson. And that's going to lead to subs for Coach Terry's aid. Jamie Ruddle re-enters the game. Uh, and Tamara Miskovic, a freshman guard from Belgrade, Serbia, enters as well. Miskovic feeds to Porter down low. That's Duhant. Duhant feeds it back to Porter. The baseline, uh, excuse me, the free throw line jumper is good. Crystal Porter now with four points off the bench. Powell driving left side, kick out Martinez. Martinez pump fakes the three. Now we'll dribble it back out. Mills trying to get the steal. Jaredor sets a good screen. Now Martinez will drive right side. Denied by Miskovic. Tries to get the outlet pass to Powell. However, fight for it on the ground. Duhant. DeHaunt was on the ground for it, and they're going to say a kick ball on the Gales. So it's going to stay with Canisius. And there's Demika Martinez. She commits a turnover. First one today. Sabrina Girador takes a seat on the bench. Haley D'Angelo re-enters for her. Iona leading 17-13. 12-38 to go in the first. As Jamie Ruddle in transition cannot make the baseline jumper. Joy Adams is fouled while attempting to get the rebound. So the ball will go in Iona's favor. Lauren DeHaunt called for the personal foul, her first. Martinez left wing as Kanishis is playing a 2-3 zone. Now Powell has it looking to go baseline. She does, double team by Miskovic and Ruddle. Picks up her dribble, kick it out to Aaliyah Robson, driving left side, extra pass to D'Angelo, being guarded by Porter. Now it's back to Martinez with four on the shot clock. Martinez with one, has to put up a prayer. It does not fall. And they're going to call an foul on, I believe it is going to be Jamie Ruddle holding on to Joy Adams. As you see the replay here, I'm not sure. I didn't see the foul there, but they're going to call it on Jamie Ruddle. I only will take it. As Martinez gets the inbound pass to Powell. With roughly 12 minutes to go in the first half, Iona leads by 4, 17, 13. Powell drives left side, kick out Robinson for three. Oh, that one doesn't rattle home, and the rebound goes to Miskovic. It looked good, should have dropped. The long pass to Ruddle, she tipped it. It goes to Hua Huli, but they're going to call a foul on a Leah Robinson. That's going to be Iona's second personal foul of the half, and that's going to bring us to a timeout. With 11.52 to go, the Gales hold a four-point edge, 17-13. to 13. Let's all go to the Beachmont. Come in and see what we're all about.
For years, the Beachmont has been all about you. Great dining, great atmosphere, and has been a meeting place where the entire Iona community gathers. The Beachmont Tavern at 750 North Avenue in New Rochelle, right across the street from Iona, has always been the first choice for Gale fans before and after each game. We are open seven days a week for lunch or dinner and is a fun place to be any hour of the day. Mondays are half price wing nights at the Beachmont. Enjoy the best buffalo wings in town along with half off of domestic pitchers. Tuesday is a two for one night with domestic bottles and appetizers. Wednesday enjoy our great burgers half priced as well along with three dollar domestic bottles. Friday is happy hour so come in and enjoy some complimentary wings. If you're planning a get together at the Beachmont they have a private room available for your party or if you're having it at home let the Beachmont cater it. The Beachmont is more than just a restaurant it's a meeting place for sports fans. Watch the big game on one of our large TVs. The Beachmont has the NFL's Sunday ticket. Bring in a ticket stub from any Iona game and receive a free half dozen Beachmont wings. That's the Beachmont Tavern, 750 North Avenue in New Rochelle. We look forward to seeing you there. John Sanko with you here on icgales.com. Joining you courtside from the Heinz Athletic Center with Iona College Gales hold a four-point lead over the Kinesis College Golden Griffs. 17-13 to is the score. The leaders for Iona thus far, it's Aaliyah Robinson with six points, D'Amica Martinez with four points, Joy Ems and Sabrina Gerard, are, Sabrina Gerard are contributing two, and Alicia Powell with three. As off the inbound, Kanisha scores right away. Jamie Ruddle puts it in a defensive brain lap there from the Gales, led to two easy points for Ruddle. 17 to 15 the score now, they're gonna call a traveling violation on Alicia Powell. So not the way I would have wanted to come out of that timeout, letting up an easy two, then a quick turnover. Now Canisius has the opportunity to tie it or take the lead. 17-15 the score, 11.35 to go. Huahuli feeds it baseline. That is to DeHaul. Now back to Huahuli. Now feeds it to Miskovic. Now far side Porter. A long two-point field goal. Rattles home in front of Joy Adams. 17-17 the score now. Jamie Porter. Excuse me, Crystal Porter with six points off the bench. Serena Gerador at the scorer's table for Iona. D'Angelo, she'll take a three-point field goal. That's off back rim, no good. Huahuli gets the rebound, feeds it to Miskovic. Huahuli now top of the key. Martinez matched up on her. Looking to lob it into Ruddle, who's posting up on Adams. Adams trying to front her. Now it's DeHaul in the right corner, feeds it back to Porter. Now it's top of the key, swings it around to Miskovic. Swings it around to Huahuli. Pump fakes on the three, drops to the elbow. Eight seconds on the shot clock. DeHaunt driving left side. Kick it out to Huahuli. She's going to have to put up a shot. Robinson goes above a screen. Denies it to Porter. Porter will take the floater. Off the backboard. No good. Joy Adams gets the rebound. Great defense by the Gales. And Adams now look to contribute. And she kicks it out to Aaliyah Robinson. She'll take the three. Robinson. Oh, it doesn't drop. And the rebound pulled out by Miskovic. That would have been a big bucket for the Gales. However, Huahuli brings the ball up now for Kanishas. Now she feeds it to Miskovic. Handling the point guard spot. Lobs it down low to Porter. However, bad pass. Powell with the steal. Back-to-back -back good defensive possession for the Gales. Martinez has it in the right corner. Feeds it down low to Adams. Adams posting up on Miskovic is called for the foul. Miskovic called for the pushing foul. Her first, the team's fourth. Sabrina Gerador checks in, replacing Alicia Powell. Crystal Porter takes a seat for the Golden Griffs. Tiana Mills entering along with Von de Bovenkamp. Jarrador gets in, swings it around to Robinson. Adams at the elbow. Back out to Robinson from the free throw line. Great pass down low to Jarrador. Can she finish? Yes, she can. That's a great look from the sophomore, feeding the senior. Giving the Gales a two point lead, 19 to 17. Now Gales putting on a bit of a 2-2-1 press. Kanishas breaks it fairly easily. Now it's DeHaunt driving baseline. Puts up the floater over Jarador. However, she missed it. However, rebound went to Bovenkamp. Bovenkamp missed it. And Adams pulls it down. 9.30 to go. The score is 19-17. Morbido looking to check in for Kanishas at the next whistle. As Martinez left wing. Who will... That's Huahuli forcing her left. Martinez will take the jumper. That's off the side of the rim. No good. Pulled down by Mills. Mills pushing the tempo. D'Angelo keeping up. Mills driving right side. D'Angelo denies it. And Mills is forced to dribble it back out. Great transition defense by the Gales. A lob entry pass to Ruddle. And Ruddle finishes off a great feed from Bovenkamp. 
And we're now at 19 once again. A back and forth game here at the Heinz Center. The Gales and the Griffs doing battle as a long pass by Martinez is tipped out of bounds by Bovenkamp. You see Robinson there, great feed to Jador. One power dribble goes up strong with the right hand and she gave the Gales the lead at the time. And now Jarrador will take a seat as Cassidy Ranger checks in for the first time for Iona. Martinez will dribble it back out to the Iona logo. Now will tend to go toward the left side. She'll take the uncontested three. No one came out to close up on her. However, she missed it, and the rebound was pulled, out to, pulled down by Jen Lennox, who checked in for Canisius. And now Mills has it on the left side. She looked to drive on D'Angelo, once again denied. Now pass to Morbido. Morbido feeds it to Hua Huli, yet to take a three-point shot. Now to Mills. Mills will take the three-pointer. Blocked by Joy Adams. Haley D'Angelo crowds the loose ball. Spin move on Mills. Trying to get across the timeline. Feeds it to Martinez. Martinez to Robinson. Robinson for three. Yes! Alia Robinson, her third three-point field goal of the game. Give her nine points and give the Gales a 22-19 lead. Defense leading to offense there for Iona. That was a thing of beauty. They're going to call a holding foul on the Gales. Haley D'Angelo card for the foul, holding on Mills, who was trying to cut through the lane. Lennox takes a seat. Porter re-enters for Canisius. Mills feed it to Morbido. Morbido drives baseline. Blocked once again by Adams. However, loose ball goes to Porter. She puts it up strong. It doesn't fall, but she will head to the free throw line once again. And that's going to bring us to an official timeout with 7.57 to go. It's a tight one here at the High Center. The Gales lead Canisius 22 to 19. Division One basketball returns to Springfield this March. The Mac Men's and Women's Basketball Championships, where somebody could become an NCAA champion. March 6th through the 10th, Mass Mutual Center in Springfield. Gets it off from mid Get your tickets for the MAC Basketball Championship and get into the action. All the way to the finish at Ticketmaster.com, MacAchusetts.com, or at the Mass Mutual Center box office. Presented by Mass Mutual Financial Group. The House of Sports is Westchester's premier youth sports training facility, specializing in skill-based teaching and coaching. The House of Sports focuses on basketball, lacrosse, baseball, and performance training. Their 120,000 square foot facility is located in Ardsley, New York, which is just minutes away from Manhattan, northern New Jersey, and Connecticut. Be sure to visit their website at www.houseofsportsny.com or give them a call today at 914-479-5419. Back here from the Heinz Athletic Center, John thank you joining you here on icgales.com. The Gales leading Canisius 22 to 19. The Gales lead coming on a great play by the Gales. First it was a block by Joy Adams and a transition three-point bucket from Alea Robinson. D'Angelo fed it to Martinez and the great extra pass to the corner. The sophomore now, Alea Robinson, leading all scores with nine points on three of five, shooting all of them from beyond the arc. However, the Gales from beyond the arc not shooting up to their percentage. Only 31%, 4 of 13, as Porter knocks down the first free throw. 13 of Iona's 21 shots have come from long range. As Porter's second free throw is good, and the lead for Iona down to 1, 22 to 21. Now D'Angelo dribbles the ball at the Iona logo. Gale's running a set play here. As Martinez curling around a Ranger screen. Double team for a second by Hua Huli and Morbido. Morbido cannot go around a Ranger screen. Martinez puts up the jumper. Looked like she was bumped on the side by Morbido. However, no foul called. And Canisius now with a chance to take the lead. Mills pushing the tempo. Looking to get by Martinez. Crossover dribble. Steps back. Now feeds it to Bovenkamp. Bovenkamp to Porter. Porter now feeds it to Hua Huli. Hua Huli. Her three-point field goal is good. She makes her mark known. That's what she's known for. And Canisius holds a two-point lead. 24-22. Alicia Powell looking to check in at the next whistle for Iona. 
Martinez drives, dishes down low to Adams. Great look. Adams can't finish. Rebound goes to Canisius. Adams frustrated with herself after missing that fairly easy layup. As Huo Huli now handles it for Canisius. The Griffiths have been able to fight back in this one, withstanding the Iona three-point onslaught. As a Von de Bovenkamp feeds it to Huo Huli, now back to Bovenkamp. Bovenkamp feeds it down low, pass stolen away by Joy Adams. Loose ball though, picked up by Mills. Two seconds on the shot clock, and they're going to call an official timeout. As the shot clock did not reset when Joy Adams got the steal. The referees wanted a reset there. However, Coach Billy Gotti didn't agree with it. She said the shot clock could have kept on running. Joy Adams never had possession. The officials for today, Kevin Sparrock, Keith Miller, and Scott Osborne. And a new shot clock for Canisius, and they do hold the two-point advantage, 24-22, 6.30 to go. As Porter has it right wing. Adams matched up on her and as the Gales in their traditional man-to-man -man defense. Mills driving right side on D'Angelo. Puts up a crazy shot. They're going to call a carry oh, violation. Yes, It'll be Iona ball. Down by two. Robinson with nine points for Iona. However, Martinez only two of eight shooting. She made her first field goal. Four points for her. Sabrina Gerardor four points, but she's on the bench. As Ranger top of the key feeds it to Aaliyah Robinson. Whoever bounced off her ankles. Now it's back to Adams on the left wing. Adams driving right side, dishes out to D'Angelo. Pump fakes on Mills. Great move by D'Angelo. However, a jumper well short. Rebound pulled down by the Griffs. R Martinez, who took a short respite on the bench, is now at the scores table looking to check in. Also looking to check in DeHaunt for Canisius. As Hua Huli wanted to take a three, but Ranger closed out quickly. As Bovenkamp got the entry pass from Morbido. Morbido will take the three. Offside rim, no good. Robinson pulls it down. Robinson pushing the tempo. Crossing over on Lance. Great feed to Adams. Adams stops on time. Kick out. D'Angelo from the free throw line. She doesn't have that one fall. Offensive rebound, Adams. Triple team. Kick out to Ranger. Kick out to D'Angelo. To Powell. Powell. Extra pass to Robinson. Robinson for three. Oh, it doesn't drop. Ranger trying to get the board. She tips it straight out of bounds. And it'll go to Canisius. That was fantastic ball movement by Iona as every single player touched it on that possession. However, Robinson could not connect on the three-point field goal. The coach got to can't be too upset with that possession as Adams was able to pull down a board. However, Haley D'Angelo struggling to shoot so far today. 0 for 4. She'll take a seat on the bench as they're going to call a foul on the drive. DeHalt took it in straight toward the MAC logo. Second on Ranger, fifth on the team. As Mills to inbound it from underneath the basket on the right side. Feeds it. That pass is tipped by Martinez. DeHaunt, though, gets it back to Mills. Now Mills picks up her dribble back to DeHaunt. DeHaunt will take a three. No good. Mills offensive rebound. Ranger matched up on her. Mills drives baseline kick out to Hua Huli. Hua Huli, that pass is knocked away by Robinson. Great hustle there by Robinson. Had basically run across the court to tip that one because no one was anywhere near number four. Rado looking to check in for Kanichis at the next whistle. As with 4.42 to go, the Gales trail by 2, 24-22. And make it a four-point lead for the Griffs. Crystal Porter really contributing with 10 points on three of four shootings. She's also perfect from the free throw line. Powell driving left side. Goes in and she is fouled hard by Porter. A big bump, however, the basket fell, however, it won't count. The, the foul was committed on the floor. That is Porter's first personal fifth team foul. Hua Huli takes his seat as Tamara Miskovich checks in for Canisius. Powell gets it into Robinson. Robinson will take a three off the inbound. That's no good. Rebound falls to Porter. The Gales have fallen a bit cold from the outside. They haven't scored in over three and a half minutes. Mills. He just to home to home gets it to Porter. Porter is hot. Make it 12 points for Crystal Porter. The Gales need to stop her because right now Canisius is running on all cylinders. Martinez will look to make a three to end the Canisius run. However, it will not fall. 
The Gales have missed their last seven shots, and Canisius is on a nine to nothing run over the past four minutes, and they hold a six point lead, 28 22. Down low, this is DeHaunt, beat it to Miskovic. Now to Porter, Porter back to Mills. 14 seconds on the shot clock. Mills, the step back jumper on Powell. Doesn't fall. Adams gets the rebound. Adams is going to go coast to coast. 2 and 1 fast break for Iona. Feed it to the corner. Powell for 3 in transition. It doesn't drop. And Miskovic gets the board. Adams should have taken that one straight to the hoop. Gone and draw on the contact at least. However, Powell missed a 3 point field goal in transition. Jamie Ruddle misses the hook shot from the baseline. And Adams pulls down the rebound once again. Under 3.5 minutes to go. And Joey Adams is fouled by DeHaunt. And that's going to bring us to a timeout. And the Gales need a timeout. Iona's missed their last eight shots. They're trailing Canisius with 3.18 to go in the first half. 28-22. to 22. Check out J.P.'s Waterside Restaurant at 703 Mitterford Avenue on City Island, serving fresh seafood, sumptuous sizzling steaks, and delicious Italian specialties. J.P.'s is open every day year-round. Come in for lunch at J.P.'s Waterside every day, starting at 11. Don't forget about us for catering all your special occasions either. Walk-ins and reservations are accepted. That's J.P.'s Waterside Restaurant at 703 Mitterford Avenue, right there on City Island. Give us a call at 718-885-3364. That's JP's Waterside Restaurant on City Island. Division One basketball returns to Springfield this March. The Mac Men's and Women's Basketball Championships, where somebody could become an NCAA champion. March 6th through the 10th, Mass Mutual Center in Springfield. Gets it off from mid Get your tickets for the Mac Basketball Championship and get into the action. All the way to the finish. At Ticketmaster.com, MacAchusetts.com, or at the Mass Mutual Center box office. Presented by Mass Mutual Financial Group. Back here on icgales.com, John Stanko joining you. The Gales trailing Canisius 28 to 22. The Gales have not scored a field goal in the past five minutes and three seconds. In that time, Canisius has gone on a 9-0 run. They've really took in control here. The Gales offensively all out of sorts. They're shooting only 31% from the floor, only 24% from deep, and now 4 of 17 from beyond the arc, now seemingly forcing those three-point field goals. Canisius is 2 of 7 from beyond the arc. One of their shots from Hua Huli, the other from Morbido. As now Robinson to inbound and she gets it to Powell. Now Iono is going to look to answer here in the final three minutes and change in the first half, cut into this lead. Now it's going to be Robson in the corner. Feeds it to Ranger. Ranger will take a three. And Ranger will make it drop. 28-25 the score. The Gales needed that one. Ranger coming up big. Ends the Canichas run. Now Robinson is matched up in the corner with Miskovic. Now it's Bovenkamp. Bovenkamp feeds it to Hua Huli. Hua Huli being pressed by Martinez. Now it's Mills. Mills lobs it to Ruddle. Swings it around to Miskovic. Passes it to Mills. Ruddle posting up inside on Ranger. Ranger denying the entry pass. As now two seconds on the shot clock. Miskovic feeds it to Bovenkamp. And that's another shot clock violation for Canisius. As you see here, great extra pass by Robinson. Feeding it to Ranger. And then Ranger able to end the streak of Canisius on her first field goal. As Robinson left wide open for three in the corner. That one doesn't fall over. Board goes to Ranger. Ranger going up strong. And she puts in the layup. Cassie Ranger, five straight points. And now the Gales only trail by one, 28-27. Morbido to check net the next whistle for Coach Terry Zay and Canisius. Now Iona on a mini 5-0 run. As down though, it's Miskovic posting up on Robinson. Her layup is no good. Offensive rebound goes to Bovenkamp. She feeds, kicks out to Ruddle. Who a Huli pump fakes a three, driving toward the elbow. Puts up a crazy floater at the Mac logo, and it doesn't fall. Robinson. No, it's Martinez pulls down the board. Now Martinez, oh, fancy dribble on Hua Huli, driving left side. Will she go all the way? She will. The fancy behind the back crossover to get by Hua Huli, and the fancy finish from the left side gives the Gales a 29 to 28 lead. And whatever Coach Billy got to say at the last media timeout worked. And they're going to call an offensive foul on Canisius. Jamie Ruddle called for the offensive foul. And within the past minute and 30 seconds, all momentum has swung the Gales way. You see Martinez there. Fancy behind the back dribble to get by. Hua Huli and then finishes over Miskovic with the left hand.
Miguel's with a one point lead, under a minute 30 to go. Powell, been held in check thus far, drives toward the elbow, kick out to Ruben. Ruben will take a three, that's no good, and Morbido gets the board. Mills bouncing it on the hardwood, holds it at the top of the key, dribbling left side, puts up a floater over Powell, it doesn't drop, and Adams pulls down the board. Adams with the rebounds, going to go coast to coast. He's driving, losing control of a dribble, has to tip it out and finds the hands of Ruben. Look what I found. She feed it to Ranger. Ranger for three. He has Cassidy Ranger with eight points. Perfect from the floor. And she gives the Gales a four-point lead. Iona answering the 9-0 Canadians one with a 10-0 run of their own over the past two minutes, 15 seconds. Under 36 seconds to go now. Bovin can't feed it to Mills. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Mills will take a three. It doesn't fall, and Adams pulls it down. Adams looking to go coast to coast. However, shot clock is off. Porter falls hard on the court, but no foul call. As Powell drives, her layup is missed. Huahuli and Powell fight for the rebound. They tackle each other to the ground. A jump ball is going to be called. It's going to go in Kinesis' favor. Porter a little bent over. She fell hard. Got the wind knocked out of her, and she's going to take a seat. Ruddle going to check in for her. Gales lead 32-28. Now 15 seconds to go in the first half. With 10 seconds left, Mills feeds it to Morbido. Morbido... To Bovenkamp. Bovenkamp being matched up by Adams. However, Bovenkamp throws it out of bounds. Another Kaler's turnover for Canisius. With 3.1 seconds left, the Gales will have the inbound. Coach Billy Gotzi has a timeout if she wants to use it. And she is going to use it. It's going to be the first coach's timeout of the game. 30 seconds. Iona was shooting at 31% at the last media break. They're now up to 36%. However, still not shooting well from beyond the arc. That's only at 29%. They've only taken one free throw thus far. They're being out-rebounded 23-20. to We see here Cassie Ranger playing phenomenal basketball. Gets the offensive board there, lays it up and in. And then Joey Adams here, UC going coast to coast. It finds a hand of Ruben in the corner. And then Ruben, the great pass to Ranger. And then Ranger able to knock down the three. Cassie Ranger, the spark plug for this Iona run. And now they're looking to end the half possibly with a nice half-court buzzer beater here. As Martinez does have it, gets past the timeline, she'll heave it up. It does not fall. However, the ending of the first half is exactly what Iona needed. The Gales end the half on a 10-0 run. They, and Canisius misses their last seven shots and also commit three turnovers in that span. So at the halftime mark, the Gales lead Canisius 32-28. to Stay tuned to the Iona Insider Halftime Show. I'll be joined by Assistant Director of Operations Mike Ritz and Director of Operations Eric Olson to talk all things in MAC this game and all games that the Gales will be interested in moving forward because the MAC tournament is quickly approaching. Stay tuned for more action here on icgales.com. Go Like Iona Goes. All Sports International in Yorktown Heights is more than just a travel agency. It's a full-service provider for all of your travel needs, whether you are one, two, or a team. All Sports International agents are trained to negotiate the lowest airfares, but they do more than just that. Hotels, cars, vans, whatever you need, whether it's far in advance or at the last minute, All Sports International will get it done. You worry about yourself, they'll take care of the rest, individual or group business or pleasure, close or far away. The folks at All Sports International will do it all at the lowest possible cost to you. All Sports International in Yorktown Heights. Call 914-243-4590. All Sports International. They make sure the Gales get to all their road games. Yellow Book Yellow Pages is packed with buying information. Complete Yellow Pages, business white pages, community information, area maps, money-saving coupons, even a restaurant menu section. And the easy-to-read print helps you find whatever you're looking for. Available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Yellow Pages reaches your potential customers at the exact moment they are ready to buy. For more information about promoting your business in Yellow Book, call 1-800-YB-YELLOW. Yellow Book, not the other book. 
At Pasta Pasta, you can enjoy a fine dining experience at an authentic Italian restaurant located on Williams Bridge Road in the Bronx. At Pasta Pasta, all of their fine Italian dishes are made fresh on the premises daily. Pasta Pasta can cater and deliver for any function in both Westchester and the Bronx. Come and enjoy your next get-together in our luxurious party room. Pasta Pasta is open seven days a week. Call 718-892-9634, located on 2023 Williams Bridge Road in the Bronx. That's Pasta Pasta. Division One basketball returns to Springfield this March. The Mac Men's and Women's Basketball Championships, where somebody could become an NCAA champion. March 6th through the 10th, Mass Mutual Center in Springfield. Gets it off the mid- Get your tickets for the MAC Basketball Championship and get into the action. All the way to the finish at Ticketmaster.com, MacAchusetts.com, or at the Mass Mutual Center box office. Presented by Mass Mutual Financial Group. The House of Sports is Westchester's premier youth sports training facility, specializing in skill-based teaching and coaching. The House of Sports focuses on basketball, lacrosse, baseball, and performance training. Their 120,000-square-foot facility is located in Ardsley, New York, which is just minutes away from Manhattan, northern New Jersey, and Connecticut. Be sure to visit their website at www.houseofsportsny.com or give them a call today at 914-479-5419. Back here on ICGales.com, John Seiko being joined by Assistant Director of, of Operations, Mike Ritz. However, Eric Olson not here to join us <laughs> for some reason. He's missing in action. Uh, he's a busy, busy man. <laughs> the Gales lead 32-28 to 28 here at halftime. And, I mean, they needed that 10-0 run at the second half to, to get this lead. However, Mike, what did you see here in the first half that really stood out to you? I saw Cassidy Ranger come in huge come in huge with uh with eight points in the final in the final two minutes of the second of the first half to close it on a 10-0 run which was fantastic um i, I i'm really proud of Cass to really come in because she was been working on her shot for the past week and um to see her come out um get in there when we really needed it we were mm-hmm. it was 28 22 all the momentum ha- was Kenesha. she had a big three and a big offensive rebound and a putback um so i for me that that was the biggest key we w- with meek not shooting well we need somebody to step up, and Cassie did that. Cassie Rainer's been seeing more minutes lately the past couple weeks or so. She's been, she's been playing much better. What do you think for her got her more playing time with Coach Gotsi? I think that she showed she's showing more effort in practice. I, th- I really think that's what it is. Um, she's, she's, she's putting in the extra work, putting up the extra shots. Um, she's more vocal on defense, more vocal in practice. I think Coach Gotsi honestly likes seeing that. She likes seeing the, uh, the extra effort. And that you actually can, you know, just just show some effort that you care about about the spot you want. You want to get your spot back, mm-hmm. and, uh, and and that'll get you minutes on the, on, on the court. Because honestly, there um, towards the back, the back end of this max schedule, there's been more minutes to be had. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a, a lot of players playing less minutes. Uh, we especially with with Demika not necessarily playing very shoot very well, um, sitting her down for a little bit. There's more minutes to be had, and I think uh, a lot of the reserves see that. I think Cassidy sees that. I think Ruben sees that, and they've been working hard in practice to try to get get some minutes. The Gales are six of twenty-one from beyond the arc. That's only twenty-nine percent. They've taken a lot of three-point field goals. They set a record last game against Niagara. They're taking a lot of threes here today. Are you scared a little bit that this offense is becoming a little bit too one-sided from beyond the arc? I would be a little more worried if they weren't open threes. I think a lot of it is that's how our offense kind of is. This motion offense has really been the key for. Our success, they, we, we're spread out. We have uh, a lot of off the dribble. Tamika can take anybody off the dribble. So could Alicia. Haley's, Haley can, can easily get into some spots. And then as soon as the defenders close in, kick it out, and the, and the three is open. So we're shooting open threes. That's why I'm not that worried, because we're shooting within our offense, mm-hmm. and we're not forcing. Now, if we were forcing some, which we do, we're not forcing a lot, but when we force threes, that's when I worry because the last thing we want, we need this team to, to need is rely on the three point to rely on the three point shot. Um, once we, if, if if we start to rely on the three a little too much, that's when it could be a red flag in the next couple weeks at max. But if you're if we're getting in our offense, Coach Gotti wants us to shoot it because we're a pretty good three point shoot team. That we are. We're, we're among the top in the MAC. However, I own ended the half on a 10-0 run, but Kanishas had a run of their own where they really controlled the tempo for a good five minute stretch. It was all Kanishas. What during that five minute stretch was problematic for Iona? Uh, our, I mean, our defense. I think that they are. Uh, Kanisha's doing a great job at running their, their stuff, running their offense, but we're just letting them do it. I think that we're kind of just sitting back on D 
in this man to man and kind of just waiting to see what Canisius does. And that can't happen. That's a lot. That, that's a big problem sometimes with our defense. We kind of let them run their stuff and see if we can stop it. We need to force them to do what we want them to do. Force them into the corner so we can trap. We need to guard the passing lanes, which we haven't, especially on the perimeter. Point guard gets the ball. We gotta, we gotta guard. We gotta guard the wings. We gotta make it a little, a little harder for them to, to get that entry pass into the post. We had to guard the passing lanes way better in the second half. If you look at this, Joey Adams actually has 12 rebounds for Iona. I look at the statue now. I was not expecting that. She's got 12 of Iona's 20. You saw the, her double double streak end yesterday. Only six points because she got into early foul trouble. What are you seeing from her in the first half here today? I mean, she's always aggressive on the boards. I think. There's very rarely is there a time where you can't say Joy didn't, wasn't aggressive on the boards at all. Um, and I honestly, the, the points are going to come for Joy just because she was always underneath the basket. So she point, she's not worried about points. She's worried about playing defense. And Coach Kelly and Coach Gatz are just worried about her playing defense, her getting some boards, and her staying on the court with not being in foul trouble. The points are going to come. They're just worried about her, her effort on the glass and her effort on defense. Other than that, Joy's going to be just fine. However, the the other top leading rebounder for Iona is Alicia Powell with two and Sabrina Gerador with two. The rebounding has gone one-sided, and Coach Gotzi said that when the guards chip in on the rebounding, this team is so much more dangerous. I just want to get your take on that. It's crucial. Look at Cass at the, at the end of the half when she got the rebound, you know? She get able to put it up. Um, I think that if... If we can get somebody other than Joy to rebound, even Sabrina, or uh, and even I, I think when Alicia and Haley, obviously the two smallest players on the team, but if they can get a rebound, if they can come in, get these long boards, it extends. It, it's 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 easy to say, but it extends the possession. Kick it back out, and we can run our stuff. And it just, the longer we have the ball, we're gonna score eventually. So the more prolonged possessions we have, we get these offensive boards. It's, it's crucial. The MAC championships begin on March 6th in Springfield, Massachusetts. The conference season is winding down as we take a look here at the MAC standings thus far. You see Iona at the top, Maris, Fairfield, Quinnipiac. But then underneath there, you got the 5, maybe to the 10 point mark. A lot of teams competing for position. Canisius, Manhattan, Niagara. When you look at these MAC standings, what do you see? That's why this game I was a little worried about because Canisius has a lot to play for now. I mean, they're they're sitting there seven and ten. They don't want to lose that that what, what is it, six spot. They don't want to lose that six spot right now. They're fighting with they're fighting with Manhattan. I think they'd rather have a six seed than a seven seed. And the last thing they want to do is drop down um, to cl close towards Niagara because they're only one game behind Niagara um, for for an eight spot, which would pair pair them up in the eight nine game, and the winner would get the one seed, which. From what it's looking like, it it, it it can be us. So I think Kenny's just a lot to play for. Um, but looking at it, this is going to be a crazy MAC tournament. I think um, the top five teams really have a good shot of, of taking it from my own Maris, Fairfield, Quinnipiac Rider. I think those are the teams. But then you have the teams, scrappy teams like Kenesius, like Siena. Niagara is one of the uh, one of the best offensive teams in the, in the in the conference. So you have a lot of these teams that can can make some noise if if, if they get hot in the next couple weeks. Currently, the top four is Iona, Marist, Fairfield, Quinnipiac. Fairfield's at 13 and four. Quinnipiac is at 12 and five. Those are two teams that Iona's played tough games against. We know against Fairfield, we swept them, but it wasn't easy either time. We haven't played Quinnipiac since the start of the season. As being part of the staff, which team would you be more afraid of playing in the MAC tournament? I mean, me personally, or what the girls are, because the girls aren't going to be afraid to play anybody. I mean, if it was me though. Um, Look, we haven't seen Quinnipiac until, like, that was a big win when we when we beat him here. Haven't played him at their place yet. Interested to see how they're going to do on their senior night. Um, but, look, I, I I can't pick one because I, th I, th I think they're I think they're two good teams. Mm -hmm. We know in that semifinal game it's going to be a legit team with a legit shot to win, and we need to take them seriously. We need to take each game seriously. The first round, March 7th, again, looking like either Niagara or Monmouth. And then that, that semifinal game is going to be a battle. And then if we're fortunate enough to make it to the championship game, that's going to be a battle as well. And they know that every game you're going to have to scrap, you're going to have to fight for it. Nothing's going to be given to us. you got to earn it. Yeah, Iona has not played Quinnipiac since January 10th at home. So that, that's been a, quite a while. A lot of, the teams have changed a lot since then. But before we let you go here, what's Iona need to do in the second half to get more control of this one? Because right now, Kanishas is hanging in, and Iona's not playing their best basketball. they got to be way more active on the defensive end. I think the, our offense is going to come. you got to be more active. Like I said, you got to guard these passing lanes. you got to get your hands up. you got to get some deflections. I feel like every time they get the, up the ball, they're just, they're just they're kind of just running just running drills in practice. I just They're just getting the ball so easy into Jamie Ruddle. They're kicking it out so easy. Their guards are getting open looks. I think we've got to do a way better job on the defensive in the second half. And if we can get that, then, then we're going to come away with the win. 
Assistant Director of Operations, Mike Ritz, thank you for joining me here on the Halftime Show. The Gales leading the Canisius Golden Griffs 32 to 28, second half just moments away. Go like Iona goes. All Sports International in Yorktown Heights is more than just a travel agency. It's a full service provider for all of your travel needs. Whether you are one, two, or a team, All Sports International agents are trained to negotiate the lowest airfares. But they do more than just that. Hotels, cars, vans, whatever you need, whether it's far in advance or at the last minute, All Sports International will get it done. You worry about yourself, they'll take care of the rest. Individual or group, business or pleasure, close or far away. The folks at All Sports International will do it all at the lowest possible cost to you. All Sports International in Yorktown Heights. Call 914-243-4590. All Sports International. They make sure the Gales get to all their road games. Yellow Book Yellow Pages is packed with buying information. Complete Yellow Pages, business white pages, community information, area maps, money-saving coupons, even a restaurant menu section. And the easy-to-read print helps you find whatever you're looking for. Available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Yellow Pages reaches your potential customers at the exact moment they are ready to buy. For more information about promoting your business in Yellow Book, call 1-800-YB-YELLOW. Yellow Book, not the other book. At Pasta Pasta, you can enjoy a fine dining experience at an authentic Italian restaurant located on Williams Bridge Road in the Bronx. At Pasta Pasta, all of their fine Italian dishes are made fresh on the premises daily. Pasta Pasta can cater and deliver for any function in both Westchester and the Bronx. Come and enjoy your next get-together in our luxurious party room. Pasta Pasta is open seven days a week. Call 718-892-9634, located on 2023 Williams Bridge Road in the Bronx. That's Pasta Pasta. Division One basketball returns to Springfield this March. The Mac Men's and Women's Basketball Championships, where somebody could become an NCAA champion. March 6th through the 10th, Mass Mutual Center in Springfield. Gets it off the mid Get your tickets for the MAC Basketball Championship and get into the action. All the way to the finish at Ticketmaster.com, MacAchusetts.com, or at the Mass Mutual Center box office. Presented by Mass Mutual Financial Group. The House of Sports is Westchester's premier youth sports training facility, specializing in skill-based teaching and coaching. The House of Sports focuses on basketball, lacrosse, baseball, and performance training. Their 120,000-square-foot facility is located in Ardsley, New York, which is just minutes away from Manhattan, northern New Jersey, and Connecticut. Be sure to visit their website at www.houseofsportsny.com or give them a call today at 914-479-5419. John Sankett with you here on IonaInsider.com. Second half just moments away. The Gales leading the Griffs 32-28. to The game has had five ties and six lead changes. There was a series of runs at the end of the second half. Canisius had a 9-0 run. Iona had a 10-0 run. The Gales are able to come back and retake the lead due to Cassidy Ranger coming off the bench. Eight points for her. Perfect from the floor. Two of two from beyond the arc. She also had an offensive rebound and a putback as well. 17 of Iona's 32 points have come from the bench. Nine from Alea Robinson to lead Iona. However, it's Crystal Porter for Kinesis with 12 points on four of five shooting. She leads all scorers. Iona will have the ball to begin the second half. Adams inbound it to D'Angelo. And the starters return to the floor for both squads as D'Angelo dribbles right side, back top of the key to Powell. Now Powell will dribble left side, looking to go baseline on Hua Huli. Tapped away by Hua Huli, feeds it to Martinez, double team back to Powell. Powell now a crossover on Morbido, feeds it to D'Angelo. Ten seconds remaining on the shot clock, D'Angelo to Powell. Powell for three from the corner, no good. Offense rebound, Adams. She is called for the traveling violation as she's fell down to the ground while corralling the rebound after colliding with Morbido. So the Gales come up empty on their first possession in the second half. And now Canisius will bring the ball across the timeline. And they'll look to start the final 20 minutes off strong as Mills now has it being guarded by Adams. Ruddle on the outside. Jared or giving her a little bit of space if Ruddle wants to shoot it. Now feeds it to Morbido. Morbido to Bovenkamp. Bovenkamp. 
Feed it to Mills. Mills crossover on Martinez. Feed it down low. Back to Von de Bovenkamp. And she lays it in from the left side. Kanisha strikes first. Powell to D'Angelo. D'Angelo taking uncontested three. That one doesn't fall out. However, offensive rebound. Jared or she goes up strong. That's off the back of the rim. No good. Rebound out of bounds off of Morabito. It'll stay with Iona. The Gale starting off 0 for 3 from the floor to begin the second half. Now shooting 33% on the day. D'Angelo gets it into Powell. Adams sets a screen. Powell goes behind it. Powell driving right side, crossover dribble, center of the lane, dishes it down low to Adams. Adams slips, regains possession, and now dribbles it out toward the wing. 14 seconds on the shot clock. Jaredor has it down low. Goes up strong on Rydal. However, her shot barely grazes the rim. And the rebound goes to Canisius. Morbido brings the ball up the floor for the grips. As Cassie Ranger heading to the scores table for Iona. As Rydal has it on the far side wing. Takes one dribble. Swings it around to Mills. Mills now back to Morbido. Entry pass to Ruddle is long, stolen away by Adams. She tipped it to Martinez. Martinez looking to go coast to coast on the fast break. Goes up strong. She does not get the foul, however. Wrestles away the rebound from Morbido. Missed it. Gets her own rebound once again, and then she puts it up strong. A lot of contact there for Demika Martinez, but she ends up with two. And she gives the Gales a 34-30 lead. 17.50 to go. They have a crowd chanting defense as Mills has at the top of the key. Mills feeds it to Bovenkamp. Bovenkamp, Fonda Bovenkamp. Yes, she can. She drives the left lane. And Bovenkamp with the four points for Kanishis here in the second half. Lead back down to two. 34-32 the score as D'Angelo swings it around to Powell. Powell drives left baseline. Crossover dribble on Morbido, kick out to Jaredor. Jaredor then dishes it from the elbow. She dished it right into the hoop. A beautiful bucket there from Jaredor. And a more impressive play from Powell to get open on the baseline using her quickness. And give that assist to Alicia Powell. She now has three assists on the day. As Mills now has it from the left wing. Her three-point field goal rims in and out. Ruddle cannot crowd the rebound. However, it goes to Von de Bovenkamp. Von de Bovenkamp has to call a timeout in the corner as Powell was hounding her. And that's going to bring us to our first official timeout. Coach Billy Gotze clapping her hands, telling her team to get over to the bench. As we'll take a short break here on IonaInsider.com. The Gales leading Canisius 36-32. to Division One basketball returns to Springfield this March. The Mac Men's and Women's Basketball Championships, where somebody could become an NCAA champion. March 6th through the 10th, Mass Mutual Center in Springfield. Gets it off from mid Get your tickets for the Mac Basketball Championship and get into the action. All the way to the finish at Ticketmaster.com, MacAchusetts.com, or at the Mass Mutual Center box office. Presented by Mass Mutual Financial Group. The House of Sports is Westchester's premier youth sports training facility, specializing in skill-based teaching and coaching. The House of Sports focuses on basketball, lacrosse, baseball, and performance training. Their 120,000 square foot facility is located in Ardsley, New York, which is just minutes away from Manhattan, northern New Jersey, and Connecticut. Be sure to visit their website at www.houseofsportsny.com or give them a call today at 914-479-5419. Back here on IonaInsider.com. The Gales leading Canisius 36 to 32, 16.52 to go here in the second half. As you look here on the baseline, Alicia Powell able to get by Morbido on a fancy crossover dribble. She dished it out to Jaredor, who then made the elbow jumper. Great combination of moves there by Powell to get open and then to find the open Jaredor, knocking down that shot with confidence. That's Sabrina Jaredor now with six points, three of six from the field. Also gave her three rebounds as well. Crystal Porter taking off her warm-up shirt and she'll head to the scorer's table for Canisius as Hua Huli has it at the top of the key for the Griffs. Now this is Rotto on the near side wing. Back to Hua Huli playing hop potato now with Von de Bovenkamp. Now it's back to Mills. Mills will dribble it back out. Five seconds remaining on the shot clock. Drives left side on Adams. Puts up a crazy floater. Does not hit the rim. And the rebound goes to Martinez. Martinez... Crosses over on Mills, goes across the timeline into the paint. Great dish to Adams. Adams finishes, and a great move there by D'Amica Martinez. 
And a great pass to Jory Adams, who's able to finish that time after squandering an opportunity very similar in the first half. Rardo at the top of the key now for Canisius. Iona starting to get their transition offense going here with them with some defensive stops. And they're going to call a three-second violation on Avon Nabov and can we see Domenico Martinez here gets past the three-point line, draws two defenders, then feeds it to Joy Adams down low. That's great awareness from the junior captain. And that's that telepathic connection that Adams and Martinez has to the most dynamic players in the MAC. And with 15.58 to go, we're going to take another short break here on IonaInsider.com. The Gales hold a 38-32 lead over the Canisius Golden Griffs here from the Heinz Athletic Center. Division One basketball returns to Springfield this March. The Mac Men's and Women's Basketball Championships, where somebody could become an NCAA champion. March 6th through the 10th, Mass Mutual Center in Springfield. Gets it off the mid Get your tickets for the MAC Basketball Championship and get into the action. All the way to the finish at Ticketmaster.com, MacAchusetts.com, or at the Mass Mutual Center box office. Presented by Mass Mutual Financial Group. The House of Sports is Westchester's premier youth sports training facility, specializing in skill-based teaching and coaching. The House of Sports focuses on basketball, lacrosse, baseball, and performance training. Their 120,000 square foot facility is located in Ardsley, New York, which is just minutes away from Manhattan, northern New Jersey, and Connecticut. Be sure to visit their website at www.houseofsportsny.com or give them a call today at 914-479-5419. John Sanko with you here on, uh, on icgales.com and ionainsider.com. The Iona Gales hold a six-point edge over Canisius, 38-32, to 15-58 to go. Tamika Martinez starting to heat up here in the second half for Iona. She has eight points, still struggling to shoot, though, four of 13. Past the Rangers into the game for Iona. She has eight points. Jory Adams with four points and 13 rebounds. Alicia Powell, three points, four assists, two rebounds, but only one of six from the floor. Crystal Porter checks in for Canisius. She leads all scorers with 12 points. Vonda Bovenkamp has six points, three of six shooting. Huahuli, five points. Mills and Duhont held scoreless. Morbido with three, and Miskovic held scoreless as well. As Powell has it, she kicks out to D'Angelo on the left of the wing. D'Angelo, top of the key, back to Powell. Playing hot potato, the guards are now Powell drive. Turn to the lane. From the, the floater from the back logo is no good. Gets her own rebound, and she'll go up strong, and she'll be fouled, and she'll head to the free throw line. Powell creating her own opportunity there, using her speed, as you see here on the replay. Gets toward the Mac logo, puts up the floater. Looked like she may have been hit on the arm, but she gets her own board. That goes up strong and draws body contact. Von de Bovenkamp called for the foul. Her first personal. That's the first foul of the second half as Powell's free throw is good. Powell's second up and on its way. It drops. As Hua Huli, long pass to break the Iona press, goes to Vonda Bovenkamp. Vonda Bovenkamp trapped, gets it away to Hua Huli. Almost a three-second violation there. But DeHaunt now has it back to Hua Huli. Swings it around to Mills. Mills for three. Tiana Mills can't make a drop. However, offensive rebound goes to Porter, and she puts it back. Crystal. Porter continuing her hot shooting trend from off the bench. Give her 14 points on four of five shooting. Now Martinez has it on the left side for Iona. She drives left side, goes baseline on Porter, creates space with her body, and she's fouled on the jump shot attempt. And she'll head to the free throw line. Back-to-back trip for back-to-back trip to the charity stripe for Iona. See Martinez here. Draws body contact with Porter, then Porter closes out way too quick. And you can see there easily contact on the arm and the hip area. As Martinez first free throw up and on its way. Martinez hitting. And a nearly 90% clip from the free throw line. As Aaliyah Robinson checks in for Iona, replacing Alicia Powell. Second up and on his way for Martinez. Oh, 
is up and in, and here comes Huahuli now for Canisius. They need to answer here, down by seven. Iona starting to get in a bit of a groove here with under 15 minutes to go in the second half. That pass is tipped by D'Angelo. They're going to call a foul down though, away from the ball. We'll see who this is called on. I believe it's going to go on to Mika Martinez for a hold. Her second personal, team's first. Canisius ball out of bounds. Mills to inbound it. Gets into the safety net, Huahuli. Huahuli though, only five points. She's the leading scorer for this Canisius team. Averaging over 10 points a game. As Mills, crossover dribble on D'Angelo, kicked it to the baseline to Von de Bovenkamp. Von de Bovenkamp will draw the foul. The foul's going to be called on Joy Adams. It's her first personal foul. Mills inbound to Porter. Porter, great pump fake on Adams, and Porter will lay it in. 16 points off the bench for Crystal Porter. Her confidence is sky high right now. She had a career game last time out against Iona with 14 points and 7 rebounds. She is surpassing that today. As Martinez is coming around the screen, and it's an illegal screen set by Cassidy Ranger. As you see Crystal Porter there, uses the pump fake to get Adams in the air. And then she laid in the bucket. Now they're going to call a backcourt violation on Canisius. So Canisius could not take advantage of the offensive foul that was called on Iona. It's a new career high of points for Crystal Porter with 16 today. Surpassing 15 points she set against Fairfield. Alicia Powell drove baseline. Porter and Von de Bovenkamp were both there. We'll see who the foul is called on. Courtney Von der Bovenkamp is called for the foul. Saying they got Powell's wrist heading up to the rim. So Powell will head back to the free throw line where she is two for two today. Make it three for three. Emily Weber checking in for the first time for Canisius. She's a sophomore out of Clifton Park, New York. Standing at five foot nine, pouncing at five foot seven, knocks down the second free throw. So with roughly 14 minutes to go, Iona's lead back up to 743 to 36. And Porter in transition had a pass soar over the head of Weber. So back-to-back -back turnovers for Canisius. Coach Terry Zay trying to keep her his team's morale up right now because some careless turnovers have allowed Iona to build this lead and they seem to not be relinquishing it right now as Canisius is folding under their own mistakes. As Aaliyah Robinson looking to make a three-point field goal coming off the bench. She doesn't make it. Joy Adams gets the offensive rebound, kicks out to D'Angelo. It's a new shot clock for Iona. D'Angelo gets it to Adams in the corner and he'll, she will dribble it back out to the wing. Now she'll dribble it back out to the top of the key with 15 seconds on the shot clock. Crossing over on Weber, kick out D'Angelo. D'Angelo for three. Yes! Haley D'Angelo connects for the first time today. And gives Iona their largest lead of the game at 10, 46 to 36. 2-2-1 two, two, press put on by Iona. Duhon dishes it out to Weber. Weber is rejected out of bounds by Joy Adams with authority. It was great passing from Canisius to break the press. However, Iona able to recover quickly as Mills to inbound and now gets it into Porter on the baseline, posting up on Martinez. Her jumper is good over to Mika Martinez. Crystal Porter is in the zone, 18.7 of eight shooting. 46-38 the score. Demika Martinez for three. Rims in and out. And Porter pulls down the rebound. 12.45 to go as Huahuli now will take a transition three. That's an air ball and Martinez has it. Martinez trying to lead transition offense for Iona. She'll stop on a dime from the MAC logo. Put up the short jumper and she'll make it. Tiana Mills far too concerned with a trailing Joy Adams there. And Demika Martinez made her pay. And the Iona lead is up to 10. 48-38. Balance scoring for the Gales. No player is in double figures. 
D'Amico Martinez with nine points on four of 14 shooting, as you see on this nice little short jumper here. Standing on the second A of the MAC logo here. Giving Iona a 10 point lead. Now D'Amico Martinez has a stats update. She does have 11 points to lead Iona in scoring. Alia Robinson, nine points, three of nine shooting. Jory Adams, four points, 14 rebounds. And we still have over 12 minutes to go. Without Crystal Porter, Canisius would be nowhere. She is 18 of their 38. J.B. Ruddle checks in for Canisius after a short time on the bench as Porter now has it as Canisius looks to break the press. Mills dribbles it across the Iona timeline. Feeds it to Hua Huli, gets it to Porter driving baseline. Porter's floater, no good. Own offensive rebound, goes up strong once again. That's no good, tips it to herself again. Porter playing out of her mind as she, as Hua Huli now has it, feeding it back to Porter at the elbow. Lob pass down low to Ruddle, seals off Adams, whoever cannot make the layup, and Adams pulls down the rebound, her 15th. Adams kicks it out to D'Angelo, swing pass to Powell from the baseline, driving, great dish down low to Adams, she can't convert the layup, and her offensive rebound tipped out by Porter. Mills now has it, driving, dish down low to DeHaul. DeHaul is fouled hard by Martinez, who went jumping up in the air, anticipating the shot. Unlanded hard on DeHaul. That's D'Amico Martinez's third personal foul and the fourth team foul. And that's going to bring us to an official timeout. The Gales hold a 10-point edge, 48-38 to here on icgales.com. Let's all go to the Beachmont. Come in and see what we're all about. For years, the Beachmont has been all about you. Great dining, great atmosphere, and has been a meeting place where the entire Iona community gathers. The Beachmont Tavern at 750 North Avenue in New Rochelle, right across the street from Iona, has always been the first choice for Gale fans before and after each game. We are open seven days a week for lunch or dinner and is a fun place to be any hour of the day. Mondays are half price wing nights at the Beachmont, Enjoy the best buffalo wings in town, along with half off of domestic pitchers. Tuesday is a two-for-one night with domestic bottles and appetizers. Wednesday, enjoy our great burgers, half-priced as well, along with $3 domestic bottles. Friday is happy hour, so come in and enjoy some complimentary wings. If you're planning a get-together at the Beachmont, they have a private room available for your party. Or if you're having it at home, let the Beachmont cater it. The Beachmont is more than just a restaurant, it's a meeting place for sports fans. Watch the big game on one of our large TVs. The Beachmont has the NFL's Sunday ticket. Bring in a ticket stub from any Iona game and receive a free half dozen Beachmont wings. That's the Beachmont Tavern, 750 North Avenue in New Rochelle. We look forward to seeing you there. John Sinkin with you here on icgales.com. The Iona College Gales leading Canisius College 48-38. to Joy Adams leading the charge here in the second half. You see that layup made there underneath the basket. And Joy Adams also everywhere, rebounding the ball, passing the ball, doing everything for Iona. And that's Haley D'Angelo knocking down the three off the assist from Adams. And then this block by Joy Adams rejecting Weber into the Iona College dancers. Also give Joy Adams a steal as well to go along with four points and 15 rebounds. Five of those rebounds offensive. As now Canisius has it out of the timeouts. Ruddle at the top of the key, feeding it to Porter. Now Porter gets it to Mills back at the top of the key. They're going to call a foul away from the ball, and it's going to go on Sabrina Gerador. I have a foul number three, Sabrina Gerador. First on Gerador, fifth on the team. Could be her first team foul. Mills inbounds into Ruddle, now holding it above her head, takes one dribble, feeds it now to Porter. Porter at the top of the key, foot on the three-point line. Dishes it out, this is Duhant. Duhant feeds it to Ruddle. 15 seconds remaining on the shot clock as Mills has it right wing. Goes to Ruddle, Ruddle take the three-point shot. Offside rim, no good. Powell pulls down the board. Immediately, she pushes the tempo. Long pass to Adams. Adams jump stop. Now will dribble it back out. Smart play by Joy Adams not to force anything there. When she didn't have the numbers. No, Adams at the top of the key. Hula Huli hedging out far, and Hula Huli gets the steal. Hula Huli feeds it to Mills. Mills gets by Adams on a crossover, and she'll knock down the short jumper. Tiana Mills. Tiana Mills 
Cuts the lead down to eight. Nils, now with two points, not shooting well though, only one of eight. However, now this is Leah Robson in the far corner, has been held scoreless here in the second half. She now takes a jumper from the elbow, and as I say that, Aaliyah Robinson on the board here in the second half. Gives Iona back a 50 to 40 lead. Robinson now in double figures with 11 points. Not shooting as well today though as she did against Niagara. Four of 10, three from nine from beyond the arc. Evening out at 50% from three point line over the past two days. As Mills feeds it to DeHunt in the corner. Now to Hua Huli. Hua Huli has only taken four shots today. As now DeHaunt will take a three-point field goal. It does not fall on Sabrina Jared or it gets the rebound. Feeds it to D'Angelo. Now D'Angelo bringing it across the timeline. Powell left side. Crossover on DeHaunt. Feeds it to Jared or down low. Spin move going up strong with the right hand. Off back rim. No good. Olay Robson trying to fight for the rebound. Tips it. And it eventually finds the hands of Powell to Adams. Adams now using a D'Angelo screen. Driving right side, crossover dribble, kick out D'Angelo. D'Angelo for three. It does not fall. Jared Orlo, the offensive rebound, goes up strong and she finishes. Sabrina Jared or having one of her best games in quite a while. Give her eight points and six rebounds. She is shooting four of eight from the floor. By far the best game for the senior in quite some time. I was going to call a foul on the handoff. Mills was handing the ball off to Hua Huli. We're going to call a foul on D'Angelo. That's the team's sixth foul. Christina Rubin checking into the game, replacing D'Angelo. It's a second personal foul on D'Angelo, so she may take a seat maybe until the next media. Lennox enters the game for Canisius, along with Von de Bovenkamp. Mills handoff to Hua Huli. Hua Huli has not seen much time on the bench today. She plays the majority of the game for the Golden Griffs. And she drives right side. Her shot, no good. Rebound. Is going to go in Iona's favor as a foul is going to be called on Kayla Hua Huli. Hua Huli called for the strike to the head. Obviously incidental on Robinson. So Iona with a 12-point lead and 8.52 to go has the ball. The second half has been dominated by the Gales for the most part from start to finish as Adams will now take a three-point field goal. It will doesn't drop. However, offensive rebound to Rubin. Kick out to Robinson. Oh, she had the open three. Decides not to take it. Jump stop to the right elbow, but she's fouled on the drive. So it will be Iona Ball underneath. Fifth team foul on Canisius. Vander Bovenkamp now with three personal fouls. Powell feeds it to Adams on the free throw line. She'll take the jumper well short. Hua Huli tips the rebound to Mills. Mills will dribble it out the court. Dishes it to DeHaunt. Back to Mills. One dribble. Pull up jumper. Well short off the front of the rim. Jaredor pulls down another rebound. Hands it off to Powell. Powell is then fouled by Tiana Mills. Mills trying to put a little bit of ball pressure to slow the Gales down. She did so, but a foul was her sacrifice as Morbido checks in for Canisius along with Tamara Miskovic. Powell top of the key. Pass to the corner to Ruben. Ruben had the open three instead, dribbles it. And now she'll dish it off to Powell. Back at the top of the key. Ten seconds remaining on the shot clock. Martinez on the bench. Ruben's going to have to take the three-point shot with the shot clock winding down. An air ball. Ball is tipped out of bounds by Hua Huli. So it will be Iona Ball. However, only four seconds will remain on the shot clock. That will bring us to an official timeout, however, with 7.57 to go. The Gales hold their largest lead of the game. 12 points over Canisius, 52-40. 
The House of Sports is Westchester's premier youth sports training facility, specializing in skill-based teaching and coaching. The House of Sports focuses on basketball, lacrosse, baseball, and performance training. Their 120,000 square foot facility is located in Ardsley, New York, which is just minutes away from Manhattan, northern New Jersey, and Connecticut. Be sure to visit their website at www.houseofsportsny.com or give them a call today at 914-479-5419. Back here on icygales.com, the Gales with a 52-40 lead over Canisius. Let's revisit the player matchup that we highlighted in the pregame show today. Both players being fairly unspectacular. Kayla Huahuli, 2 of 5 from the floor, 5 points, 2 assists. Alicia Powell struggling shooting, 1 of 7. 7 points, she does have 4 assists. She also has 4 rebounds as well. She's perfect from the free throw line, 4 of 4. If you were to revisit this, we'd have to say it'd be Joy Adams with 15 rebounds and 4 points. However, if you also look, Crystal Porter, no one could have predicted that. 18 points, 7 of 10 shooting, perfect from the free throw line, 4 of 4, and 6 rebounds. But Canisius right now is in a bit of a spell. Their offense is not clicking the way it was in the first half. Whether that be proponent of Iona playing better defense, or if, as in the scouting report, these players just aren't on the same page for Coach Terry Zay. Powell to inbound it for Iona on the baseline. Gets in, the pass is tipped, and they're going to call a foul. As the pass was tipped, Adams was chasing it. They're going to call a foul, a hold on Canisius down low. It's going to be the seventh team foul. The foul goes on Porter. It's her third, and now it's one and one for Iona. So basically a worst-case scenario there for Canisius just unfolded. As Joy Adams cannot make the first free throw, though. Mills feeds it to Porter. Porter driving baseline on Adams. Step back, crossover, jumper. No good. They're going to call the foul, however, on the closeout. And Joy Adams called for the personal foul. Iona foul number 24, Joy Adams. Second Adams' is second personal foul. Crystal Porter on the line, two shots. Porter misses the first free throw. The second one is good. So we now 52 to 41. Powell now driving baseline, spits a double team of Hula Huli and Mills. However, her pass is stolen away by Morbido. Morbido trying to avoid the pickpocket of Powell. She does so, picks up her dribble and dishes it back out to Mills. And then Canisius Golden Griss will reset their offense as Vonda Boven Kemp feeds it back to Hula Huli, top of the key. Quarterfinger, she loses control of it and now gives it back to Mills. Down low, Hula Huli spin move on Robinson. Her layup no good. Jared or pulls down the board. Powell now feeds it to Adams. Adams. Looked to do a crossover dribble on Porter, however, it was tapped away. She regains possession, now it's Robson, top of the key, back to Powell. Under seven minutes to go, Iona holds an 11-point lead. Powell now driving dish out Robson. Robson for three, the rainbow, it is good! Alia Robinson with the high-arcing rainbow three-point shot. It finds the pot of gold on the other end, and it gives the Gales her largest lead of the game at 14.55 to 41. Thunder Bolvin camp. To Porter. Now to Hua Huli looking for the answer. It is not there. And the rebound pulled down by Martinez. Martinez now driving past Porter. The step back pull up three. It is good. Back to back three point field goals for Iona. And they've opened up a 17 point lead just like that. You see Powell here driving left side, kick it out to Aaliyah Robinson. The beautiful stroke for her, and then Demika Martinez, nobody closed out on her in transition, and she made everyone pay for Canisius. And Coach Derry Zay has to call a timeout. I want to give a special thanks to everyone who tuned in on, on IonaInsider.com this year. This is the final home production for the staff here at the Heinz Athletic Center. 
want to give a special thanks to Steve Colzo in the back in the far corner in the darkness. He's been operating the replays, the graphics, and the score for the entire year. He's done a fantastic job. I've had the privilege of working with Steve now for four years. He won't meet a more passionate Gales fan, even though he hides in the shadows and edits all the highlight reels for you to watch on icygales.com. And Steve will have plenty of footage to edit after this one because Iona's offense has begun to click over the past four minutes or so, and a 17-point lead has blossomed for Coach Billy Gotze. As Mills has the inbound now, and the Gales immediately put on pressure to try and speed up this Canisius team. But this Jamie Ruddle feeding it now to Porter, and Porter gives it back to Mills. Coach Terrize needs his team to score a bucket here to end this Iona run as Ruddle kicks it back out to Porter, dishes it to Hula Huli on the baseline, kick out to Mills. Mills will take a three-point field goal. It doesn't fall. Rebound, however, goes to Morbido. She'll drive baseline, kick it out to Porter on the left block. Her turnaround jumper is good over Robinson. And Canisius able to score out of the timeout. Under six minutes to go. Robinson, the pass is tipped off of her foot. Out of bounds. It'll go to Canisius. So Canisius had that timeout with a lot of energy. And they're looking to cut into this lead down 15. Ruddle feeds it to Hula Huli. Back to Mills, top of the key. Mill drives right side, puts up the layup. No good. Rebound fought for, pulled down by Morbido. Morbido dishes it out to Ruddle. Far corner, her three-point field goal doesn't fall, but tip out and another offensive possession for Canisius. Porter on the near side wing, dishes it down to Hula Huli. Pass goes through her hands and finds Sabrina Jaredor, who then gives it to D'Angelo. Niona now with a 58-43 lead. Look to score here with five minutes to go here in this one. Martinez splitting a double team. Kick out to D'Angelo. D'Angelo trying to get to Jaredor, who's posting up on Ruddle. However, D'Angelo loses control of her dribble. It's Mills who steals it away. She doesn't have numbers. She's still going to go up anyway on Martinez, and she's going to miss it. That's a bad take there by Mills. Robinson pulls down the rebound. Now she dishes it off to Adams. Adams baseline jumper. It is good over Ruddle. And Tiana Mills, unwise take to the basket, leads to two points for Iona. As Alicia Powell looking to check in for the Gales at the next whistle. Iona leads 60 to 43. Basketball pass to Morbido. Her layup is no good. And the rebound goes out of bounds off of Jared Orr's hands. So it'll stay with Canisius. See here, Leah Robson, great bounce pass to Joy Adams. Immediately the quick release before Ruddle can close out. And Coach Billy Gotts is going to take a quick timeout here with 4.17 left. A full media timeout. Ladies and gentlemen, and that's going to bring us to our final full media timeout of this one. Iona holds a 17-point lead over Kenesha, 60-43. to The Iona College Goal Club is an association of dedicated friends and alumni who support Gale Athletic Programs. Annual membership provides the needed academic support services, equipment, and facility upgrades for their student athletes. For more information on the Gold Club, call the Gold Club office at 914 633 2071 or visit on the web at icgales.com. That's www.icgales.com. The Iona College Gold Club, the lifeline for Iona College athletics. Division One basketball returns to Springfield this March. The Mac Men's and Women's Basketball Championships, where somebody could become an NCAA champion. March 6th through the 10th, Mass Mutual Center in Springfield. Gets it off from mid Get your tickets for the Mac Basketball Championship and get into the action. All the way to the finish at Ticketmaster.com, MacAchusetts.com, or at the Mass Mutual Center box office. Presented by Mass Mutual Financial Group. Back here on icgales.com, Iona looking to close in on their 24th win of the year, leading Canisius 60 to 43. Let's take a quick look at the upcoming schedule. The Gales looking to take on Quinnipiac in their next matchup in Hamden, Connecticut. Quinnipiac at 12 and 5, and then they'll be home to Marist on Senior Day versus the Red Foxes. And
And they're going to call an offensive foul off the inbound. Kanish just had possession. Hula Hooli was dribbling it up at the top of the key. And an offensive foul called away from the ball. Foul is called on Jamie Ruddle, her third personal. As Martinez gets it to Powell, Iona breaks the Canisius press. Now it's to Adams on the wing, using a screen from Jared Orr, drives toward the free throw line, kick out to Powell. Powell will not take the three-point shot. However, she'll cross over Hula Hooli, take it straight to the bucket, and she'll lay that one in. Alicia Powell using her jet-like speed to get into the lane and make the Iona lead 19. Canisius now most likely to fall to 7-11 in conference play as Mills kick out to DeHunt for three. Her three-point field goal doesn't fall. Offensive rebound goes to Ruddle, a new possession for the Golden Griffs. Morbido's three-point shot is no good. However, the offensive rebound goes to DeHunt and then she lays it in. DeHunt with her first points of the game. Powell to Adams, Adams for three. That one doesn't fall. Now Adams 0 for 2 from deep. However, great save by Leah Robinson. She tipped it straight to Powell. However, Powell missed the layup. But another offensive rebound for Iona and a new possession with under three minutes to go. Martinez, great hook pass. However, it's stolen away. Read beautifully by DeHunt. It was a great idea by Martinez, but better instincts by DeHunt to get there and steal it away. Now it's Mills driving kick out to Morbido. Morbido for three. That one is good. That's the first open look Morbido's had from long range essentially all day today. She's now two for four from beyond the arc. Give her six points and seven rebounds. 14 point lead for Iona Powell crossing over, gets to the Mac logo, kick out to Martinez, extra pass in the corner, Aaliyah Robson for three. She enters with a three pointer of her own. And that one might be the final dagger in Kanisha's heart. Aaliyah Robson now to lead Iona with 17 points, six of 12 shooting. As with two minutes to go, Iona holds a 65 to 48 lead. DeHaunt feeds it down low, that pass is stolen away by Powell. Powell now dishes a great look to Adams. Two steps all the way to the bucket. She misses the layup. Offensive rebound goes to Gerador and G Sabrina. Gerador lays it in. And coach Billy Gotti calls a timeout. Haley D'Angelo and Cassidy Ranger check in for Iona. Crystal Porter checks in for Kenichi to see Martinez. Great extra look there to Aaliyah Robinson. And that beautiful stroke from the sophomore. She drops it in. Then a great look from Powell to Adams. However, Adams could not convert. The offensive rebound found the hands of Sabrina Gerador, who by far has had one of the best games of her season and one, one of her best games in quite a while, maybe since her double-double against Niagara up in Buffalo. Sabrina Gerador with 10 points, nine rebounds. One rebound away from a double-double. We have a minute 49 to go. The score is 68 to 48. Iona going to improve to 17 and 1 in conference play. Improved to 24 and 3 overall. 13 and 1 at home. Their winning streak will be extended to 5. As Mills drives, she puts up a floater and it falls in off the backboard. Kanish is putting on a bit of a press as Ruben has it now. Trying to get across the timeline. They have four seconds to do so. And D'Angelo is fouled. Personal foul number five, Tiana Mills, her third team. Tiana Mills call for the personal fouls. Aurelia Kamek and Spencer Gray looking to enter for Iona. Replaces Sabrina Gerador. Sabrina Gerador will take a seat. That'll be it for her today. A near double-double, but still... Has to be a great confidence boost for the senior to know she still has it in her after seeing limited minutes over the past month or so. Sabrina Gerador with one of her best games this season. 10 points, 9 rebounds in only 22 minutes. So she did quite well for the time she was on the court. Aaliyah Robinson checks out. She's replaced by Jackie Marshall. As the subs are entering the game for both squads, Miskovic checks in along with Weber for Canisius. 
D'Angelo looking to have this second free throw, the one and one, fall in, and it does. That means Spencer Gray will check in for the red shirt senior. Haley D'Angelo finishes the day with four points, only one rebound, one assist, but her defensive prowess, well known, shutting down the perimeter play of the Golden Griffs. Miskovic feeds it down though, that pass is stolen away by Kamik and Marshall has the loose ball. She feeds it to Gray, Gray now dribbling up, pushing the tempo, feeds it to the corner to Ruben, Ruben to Marshall, Marshall swings it around to Gray, Gray driving left side, now dribbles it back out. Up next for Canisius, they will be at home for Fairfield and Ryder, not an easy way to end their conference schedule. Fairfield right now may be the hottest team in the MAC, they're playing fantastic basketball and Ryder, we know what they're capable of. Kick ball. As a kick ball violation, on call on Canisius. It's going to reset the shot clock, which was at 6, back to 15. Gray to inbound it. Gets it into Ruben. Ruben will take the three point shot. No good. Rebound falls to Canisius. Porter dribbling up down the floor, looking to score quickly. Misses the layup. Lennox cannot grab the board. However, falls to the hands of Weber. Weber gives it to Miskovic. Feeds another Porter on the right side. Spin move. Puts up a crazy shot, and Crystal Porter continues her hot day. Now Gray feeds it to Marshall. Ziona will break the press. The shot clock is off. There's 20 seconds left in this one. The Iona College Gales are going to tie a program record with 24 regular season wins this year. 24 and 3 overall, 17 and 1 in conference, five in a row for the Gales. And head coach Billy Gotti, why not? She'll tie another program record in her first year as Iona College women's basketball head coach. The final buzzer sounds. Stay tuned to Iona Insider.com. Head coach Billy Gotti will join me shortly to talk about this win. 62 to 50, 69 to 52, excuse me, the Gales defeat Canisius. Division I Basketball returns to Springfield this March. The Mac Men's and Women's Basketball Championships, where somebody could become an NCAA champion. This is the March 6th through the 10th, Mass Mutual Center in Springfield. Gets it off from Mid Get your tickets for the Mac Basketball Championship and get into the action. All the way to the finish. At Ticketmaster.com, MacAchusetts.com, or at the Mass Mutual Center box office. Presented by Mass Mutual Financial Group. John Seckel being joined here by assistant coach Ashley Kelly. Coach, you guys win 69 to 52 over Canisius. What are some things to quickly take from this win? Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's always uh, difficult to play teams who are playing well uh, at this point in the season. And Canisius is playing well. I mean, they showed it in the first half. Uh, they pretty much dominated us. But, you know, we were resilient. We uh, we stuck with it. We, we really changed a couple things. Our kids adjusted nicely. And uh, and to come out with a win is, is always a good thing. How do you feel you did shutting down the perimeter play of Canisius? Um, you know, they, they shoot it uh, with a tremendous percentage. Um, and, you know, they have very, very good... Good, um, perimeter players you know anytime that you can shut down a, a team that wants to shoot it is always a good thing um, you know tightening up we uh, other areas is definitely something we have to look at as well someone who really stepped up was Sabrina Jared order today had her best game in quite a while 10 points and nine rebounds what can you say about her play you know she she has been struggling I mean that that's something that she would tell you as well so to see uh, a kid bounce back especially a senior at this point in the season is uh, is a great thing and, and you know as far as the kid goes like Sabrina she'll continue it throughout the rest of her senior year all right coach congratulations thank you the Gale is victorious over Kinesis 69 to 52 gonna be joined now by senior center Sabrina Gerador Sabrina getting the headset on over her hair. <laughs> the Gales win 69 to 52. You had a phenomenal game. Your best in quite a while. 10 points, Thank 9 you. rebounds. Yeah. What was working for you on the floor today? Um, just uh, trying to get in on the, um, the boards today. I've been having like a couple of rough games. So, you know, it's, it's taken a lot of my team, unfortunately, to pick me up, coaches and players alike. But um, I just came in today and I said, you know, let me just, you know, do my part and let me try to get in there and, you know, be the player I know I can be. So. 
I came in with a little more confidence today, and I just, you know, try to crash and try to do my part and try to play my role today. So. What was it like battling down though with Jamie Ruddle, another senior in the MAC? You guys yeah. been battling now for four years. <laughs> yeah. Um, she's strong. She's a strong player. She has an outside game. She has an inside game. She's tough on the on the you know on the post on the block. It's hard guarding her. You know, she has that shot, that nice touch outside. So. Um, you know, I I love playing defense. That's my thing, you know, mm -hmm. as we all know. And um, I just, you know, focused on front of her, making sure that, you know, she didn't get too many touches. And when she did, I had to, you know, lock down and, you know, make sure I sli uh, was sliding with her. So I definitely tried to do that today, and that was my focus for the game. Now the Gales improve to 24-3 and three overall. Yeah. You tie a program record for most wins in a single season. Yeah. You guys have set so many records yeah. this year. This great. is another one. I mean, how's this one feel? Oh, man, it's great. You know, this team, like I said before, um, we, we're just maturing and we're just a great team and we're just glued so tightly together that, you know, even with the downs that we've had, you know, we, we're still, you know, pushing and we're fighting because the ultimate goal for us this year is to, of course, win the MAC championship, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's what we're just fighting for right now. And then, you know, we'll, we'll have goals after the MAC championship. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just right now, we're just trying to, you know, play together as a team, play our hardest and play together and play Iona basketball. Well, Sabrina, congratulations Thank on the you. win. Go enjoy this one. Thank you. The Gale is victorious over the Canisius Golden Griff, 69 to 52. We'll come back with the final stats here on IonaInsider.com. The Iona College Gold Club is an association of dedicated friends and alumni who support Gale athletic programs. Annual membership provides the needed academic support services, equipment, and facility upgrades for their student athletes. For more information on the Gold Club, call the Gold Club office at 914-633-2071 or visit on the web at icgales.com. That's www.icgales.com. The Iona College Gold Club, the lifeline for Iona College athletics. Division I basketball returns to Springfield this March. The Mac Men's and Women's Basketball Championships, where somebody could become an NCAA champion. March 6th through the 10th, Mass Mutual Center in Springfield. Gets it off the middle. Get your tickets for the MAC Basketball Championship and get into the action. All the way to the finish. At Ticketmaster.com, MacAchusetts.com, or at the Mass Mutual Center box office. Presented by Mass Mutual Financial Group. This is the post-game show wrap-up here on IonaInsider.com. The Iona College Gales defeat the Canisius College Golden Griffs 69-52. to Iona improves to 24-3 on the year. They improved to 17-1 in conference play. Canisius falls to 11-16 overall, 7-11 in the MAC. The stats for Canisius first, Jamie Ruddle with 6 points. Von de Bovenkamp had 6 points as well as, as, well as Jen Morabito. Kayla Huahuli held to five points on two of seven shooting. Tiana Mills took 13 shots, only made two of them, and finished with four points. No players for Canisius in the starting lineup finished with double figures. For them, their entire offense came from Crystal Porter. 23 points, seven rebounds. That's a new career high for her in points. She finished nine of 13 from the floor, five of six from the charity stripe. However, Canisius as a team had 17 turnovers, and Iona had 22 points off those turnovers. The leading scorer for the Gales, you got to look at Aaliyah Robinson. 17 points, 6 of 12 shooting, 5 of 11 from beyond the arc. She also had 5 rebounds and 4 assists, a great all-around game. Demika Martinez, 14 points, 6 of 16 shooting, 1 of 7 from beyond the arc. Not our best outing. She also had 6 rebounds and 4 assists. Alicia Powell, 2 of 9 from the floor, 1 of 4 from long range, 4 of 4 from the free throw line, 4 rebounds and 9 points. She had a team high 5 assists. Haley D'Angelo, 1 of 7 from the floor, had 5 points, 2 of them coming from the free throw line. Sabrina Gerador, our post game interview, one of her best games in quite a while. 10 points and 9 rebounds. Iona for the game shot 38%. They only shot 29% from beyond the arc. However, Canisius from beyond the arc shot a, a dismal 16%, and they shot 35% overall. The Iona College Gales defeat Canisius by a final of 69-52, to and up next for them, the Gales will be in action February 27th on the road at Quinnipiac. That'll be an ESPN3 broadcast tip-off set for 6 p.m. Video producer Steve Colto will join me on the, post on the, on the call there from Hamden, Connecticut against the Bobcats. And then is at home, March 2nd, Senior Day. That game will also be on ESPN3, and there may be Mac title hopes in that one. 
The Gales victorious over the Canisius College Golden Griff, 69 to 52. For everyone here at the Heinz Athletic Center, special thanks to Steve Colso for his job over the past four years, and especially this year, doing a lot of it solo on those fantastic replays. Have a good afternoon, everyone. The Gales victorious over Canisius, 69 to 52. Check out JP's Waterside Restaurant at 703 Mitterford Avenue on City Island, serving fresh seafood, sumptuous sizzling steaks, and delicious Italian specialties. JP's is open every day year-round. Come in for lunch at JP's Waterside every day, starting at 11. Don't forget about us for catering all your special occasions either. Walk-ins and reservations are accepted. That's JP's Waterside Restaurant at 703 Mitterford Avenue, right there on City Island. Give us a call at 718-885-3364. That's JP's Waterside Restaurant on City Island. Division One basketball returns to Springfield this March. The MAC Men's and Women's Basketball Championships, where somebody could become an NCAA champion. March 6th through the 10th, Mass Mutual Center in Springfield. Gets it off from Get your tickets for the MAC Basketball Championship and get into the action. All the way to the finish. At Ticketmaster.com, MacAchusetts.com, or at the Mass Mutual Center box office. Presented by Mass Mutual Financial Group. Iona College Basketball on ICGales.com was brought to you by the Beachmont Tavern at 750 North Avenue in New Rochelle, right across from the Iona campus. By the Iona College Goal Club, the lifeline for Iona College athletics. By Shannon Beverages, North Avenue in New Rochelle, for all of your beverage needs. Iona Basketball is also brought to you by J.P.'s Restaurant on City Island, by Pasta Pasta, by the Yellow Book, and by All Sport International for all of your travel needs. Proceeding was a presentation of the Iona College Athletic Department.